One half of the bracket has been emphatically filled by the Ducks of Oregon. A resounding win in the Rose Bowl over Florida State has put them in the national championship game. And now we'll meet the other half. Winners of 11 straight, champions of the Big Ten, Ohio State, and here come the Buckeyes. tonight of two of not only our era's best coaches but maybe two of the best of all time. Nick Saban won his first title at LSU three in the last five years in Tuscaloosa and Urban Meyer two wins in national title games for the Florida Gators. Head to head they've been there before too. 2008 SEC championship game number one Alabama number two Florida Tim Tebow and the Gators won it 31 to 20. 2009 SEC title game number one Florida number two Alabama and the tie took that one 32 13 and the 2010 regular season game number one Alabama number seven Florida and Nick Saban's Crimson Tide won that one 31 to 6 and now from Tuscaloosa winners of eight in a row champions of the SEC the number one team in the country the Crimson Tide of Alabama has been the Nissan pregame rush. And we're about to get a rush, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to New Orleans. Happy New Year. Brad Nussler with Todd Blackledge. Partner, we saw Ohio State earlier in the year lose their only game. They come in 12-1. and one. From that point on, they haven't lost. And it's remarkable how they've done it with their quarterback situation. Really remarkable. Consider this. It starts out, Braxton Miller's the two-time Big Ten Player of the Year. They lose him to a shoulder injury before the season even started. So right out of the gate, they've got to make some radical changes. So in steps redshirt freshman J.T. Barrett, and all he does is run and pass his way to over 3,700 yards and a Big Ten record, 45 touchdowns. Third man up, Cardell Jones, biggest of all the quarterbacks at 6'5", 250, and the best passer, 257 yards and three touchdowns in his only start, the Big Ten championship game, but a different challenge tonight against this Nick Saban-led Alabama defense that's had a month to prepare. Nick told us yesterday when we were here in the Sugar Bowl last year and got hammered by Oklahoma, they said Alabama was done. Yeah. When we lost to Ole Miss in the regular season, they said Alabama was done. I don't know who they are, <laughs> but they were wrong, and a lot of people were wrong about their quarterback Absolutely. as well. One of the great stories of college football this year, Blake Sims, the senior quarterback. When he was a freshman, they tried to move him to running back. He only had 39 pass attempts coming in this year, and Jay Coker transferred from Florida State, and everybody assumed he'd be the guy. Blake Sims never said a word. He stayed at Alabama. He competed. He won the job. The team rallied around him, and all he did was set a school record for total offense in a single season, and it helps yeah, it does. when you have the best <laughs> receiver in college football to throw to in Amari Cooper. 115 receptions, over 1,600 yards, 14 touchdowns. Keep an eye on number nine tonight because Alabama moves him all over the place to find ways to get him the ball. All right, we're going to find out who's going to get the football first as we go down to the field and our referee, Lane Clark. Gentlemen, congratulations for being here at the Sugar Bowl. I'd like to introduce all state spokesman, Dennis Hayford. He will flip this boy, and we have heads, tails, heads, and tails. Captain, what do you call? The call is tails. And it is tails who won the toss. The second half. Ohio State has won the toss, and they defer to the second half. You won your seed. Let's go with the right to the fan. That goal or kick that way? Yeah, no, kick that way. Step over here. Alabama choice this half. They've elected to receive. Good luck, gentlemen. Have a great game. So it will be the Crimson Tide on offense to start things off. And before we kick it off, we check in third member of our team, as always, Holly Rowe. Well, Coach, given it is the second start for Ohio State quarterback Cardell Jones, what does your defense need to do to affect him and make him uncomfortable? Well, you know, I think we've got to disguise what we're doing. Uh, we obviously got to win up front and try to put some pressure. 
pressure and force them into pocket a little bit. But I think we got to stop the run, too, so we create some positive down and distances for ourselves so we can affect them. You get the ball first. What did you see from Blake Sims, your quarterback, today that lets you know he's ready? I think Blake's ready to play. You know, we, he's played well for us all year. Uh, you know, I try to tell the players before, you know, we got to get rid of the anxiety, just play fast, be aggressive. You know, don't – we want to apply the pressure, not feel it. All right, Coach, thank you. Thanks. There's Nick Saban on the other side, Urban that Meyer. Awesome. All he's done in his three years is win 36 games and lose only three. Three straight years of 12 wins. A remarkable job. Took one year off to join our business, then got back into coaching after his two national championships at Florida. And he's got quite a team, and he said, you know what? Our challenge is, are we good enough? Yeah. He thinks they're going to be a better team next year. Well, he loves how relaxed they were. He loved how his team responded to everything they asked him to do in preparing for this game. But that was the big question. And right away, we'll see one of the things that Ohio State has been great at all season, and that's winning the field position battle with their special teams, one of the best in the country at where they start and where their opponents start in field position position so Kyle Clinton will tee it up Scarlet filling the Superdome along with the crimson of the Tide fans of Alabama Christian Jones and DeAndre White are back deep the 81st All-State Sugar Bowl from New Orleans here we go. Christian Jones, three yards deep, mishandles it. And now he'll have it down by White. We take a look at our Chick-fil-A impact players for tonight. Derrick Henry's got to be the man because T.J. Yeldon has been banged up, and he's a pretty good one for a backup. Amari Cooper, we've talked about him, 115 catches. On the other side, we asked Luke Fickle, the defensive coordinator, who are the two guys that have to have big games? He told us Joey Bosa and Michael Bennett on that defensive front. Now the strength of this Ohio State defense is their front. When Urban Meyer left Florida, came to Ohio State, he knew to build a championship team, it starts with a defensive line. That is what has been separating the SEC from other leagues for the last several years. He's got that kind of defensive line right now at Ohio State. Henry flanking Blake Sims. They're going to fly sweep it, though, to Amari Cooper. Just one of the many ways they get it in his hands, and a nice run, a pickup of about five before he's run out of bounds. They will pay, put... Amari Cooper in a lot of different spots. Lane Kiffin, the offensive coordinator this year, has done a brilliant job of moving Cooper around so that teams can't isolate him and double cover him. And right away, the first play of the game, they flip it to him and let him become a running back. Now he trots out to the top of your screen as a wide receiver and Sims on a second down at five from the 30. Gives it off to Henry. Only got about a yard, though. It'll bring up a third down. Alabama number one in the SEC, number two in the country in third down conversions. Nice play by Joey Bosa. Good fundamental play, maintained leverage, shed the block, and fell back in to make a tackle to bring up third down. Third down and three. P.J. Yeldon is in the Alabama backfield, but it sends a throw to Cooper. Got his left hand on it, but that's all. Duran Grant, the captain of the defense, was there defensively. Duran Grant is the best cover guy in this Ohio State secondary. He's a senior in perfect position and made a nice play on the ball. Read the eyes of Amari Cooper and swept his hand down in there to knock the ball out. So an Alabama team that had scored seven touchdowns and two field goals in opening drives this season is a three and out on their opening possession here tonight. J.K. Scott to punt. Going to bounce into the hands of Jalen Marshall, who's dropped by Landon Collins immediately. 50-yard punt and nothing on the return. Cardell Jones has one of the best nicknames in college football. 12-gauge. 
Well, Sophomore, 6'5", 250. Yeah, and he can really throw it. Now, when Ohio State beat Michigan State earlier in the year, they came out and eight of the first nine plays called were pass plays. I would not be surprised to see if Ohio State comes out throwing a lot on early downs in this ball game as well. Urban Meyer said we want to be in second down and four and second down and five, not second down and ten. First down here from the 15. Ezekiel Elliott, and he fights for about four. Let's take a look at tonight's Chick-fil-A impact players going the other way. And Zeke is one of them. Great season, over 1,400 yards rushing. Devin Smith, their long ball threat. He's something special in that wide receiver spot for Ohio State. Sean Robinson's got to control the line of scrimmage defensively. You already saw Landon Collins make an impact on the special teams. He's an All-American safety. Jones rolls, fires, kind of a wobbly pass, and it's caught oh my by gosh. Evan well, Spencer. Incomplete. Oh, hit the turf. Incredible effort by Spencer. The ball hung in the air quite a while, and he went up with one hand and tried to snatch it. I thought we had an Odell Beckham Jr. thing working there for a second. Wow. Well, we couldn't see it from that angle. Tremendous play on the ball. I'm not 100% sure he didn't catch this time. Well, yeah, maybe not. That might be the best replay right there. Third down and six now for Ohio State. Jones getting some pressure. And he'll run with it. And the big fella can run and he's got a first down. And several more yards out across the 30. Cardell Jones is a capable runner. He's not as good of a runner as Braxton Miller or JT Barrett. But in a situation like this, when everything's covered downfield, he does have the ability to run for the first down. And on third and six, he got 12. And out quickly, it's Marshall out of the backfield, and he's still on his feet. Out to the 44-yard line. Ohio State using tempo. Tempo historically has given Alabama's defense a little bit of a problem. They're trying to substitute now, get some fresh defensive linemen in. That was quarterback number one, quarterback number two, and quarterback number three gives it off. Marshall trying to sweep left this time as drops by Xavier Dixon and a loss of two. And his helmet comes off at the end of the play. Alabama has a lot of depth at the defensive line position. So Jalen Marshall's got to go out because his lid came off, so at least one play on the sideline for him. Right now, Ohio State doing a nice job trying to attack the perimeter. The inside of this Alabama defense, very difficult to run against. One of the best in the country, only giving up 88 yards per game. On a second and 13, just a straight handoff to Ezekiel Elliott trying to get wide right. And he got the corner and a hurdle. And now Elliott off the races down the sideline. First and goal, Ohio State. Great job by the center, Jacoby Bourne. Watch number 50 pull on this play, get a block on the middle linebacker. And again, hard to run inside. Your best opportunity to run is to get to the perimeter, and Elliott does that. 54 yards, first and goal, and that Jones with a stiff arm at the six-yard line. This was a designed quarterback run. I don't think we're going to see a lot of designed quarterback run calls for Cardell Jones simply because of the depth problem at quarterback right now. But that time, they tried to line up quickly and call his number and hope that the big fella could get it to the end zone. But good defensive positioning by Alabama on that play. Longest one they've given up this year was the one that got them to this point by Ezekiel Elliott, 54 yards. Second down and goal. And goal ball just shaded outside the five. Goal to go defense. Alabama has been outstanding this year. They've only given up three rushing touchdowns all season. Jones in the gun, Marshall on the move, and we're going to take a timeout here. Ohio State doesn't want to blow an opportunity. Timeout. Ohio State. Urban Meyer takes the timeout. We'll take it along with him. 11:46 remaining. Ohio State here in the first quarter, threatening. Back of the All-State Sugar Bowl, Ohio State. Down at the five-yard line. Yeah. Alabama's defense, you talked about him, Todd. Yeah, outstanding in goal-to-go situation. Very difficult to run on. Minus 16 yards and 25 opponent rushes. I think that's why Ohio State called timeout. You said it. They don't want to waste a play. 
You've got to have the right play called against this Alabama defense in this part of the field. Eighth play of the drive coming up. Six have been runs, only one pass. They fake it to Marshall. Jones pumps once, sidearms it incomplete intended for Evan Spencer. And it'll be third and goal. Alabama was not fooled by the play action. They had plenty of crimson jerseys around the intended receiver, Spencer. Good discipline on the back end of the Alabama defense that time. One of the top 15 teams in the country scoring in the red zone, going against the best in the business. Something's going to give right here. This is where you have to be alert for Cardell Jones as a runner with that big body as well. Third down and goal, and he's going to have to backpedal and fire it as far as he can into the stands, and they'll have to settle for a field goal attempt. Good pressure by Alabama that time. It came primarily from Ryan Anderson, number seven, working on the right tackle, Daryl Baldwin, and Cardell Jones did the smart thing. Don't take ourselves out of a scoring situation here. Throw it away, and let's set up the field goal. Nuremberger. 11 of 18 on the year. This will be a 22-yard field goal attempt. To try to put the Buckeyes on the board first. Up and good. So Ohio State scores first. 11-32 remaining first quarter. I'd say that's a win for the Alabama defense, though, to hold the Buckeyes to three. The 2015 All-State Sugar Bowl is brought to you by All-State. Proud supporters of college football. Are you in good hands? AT&T, presenting sponsor of the college football playoff national championship game. Chevrolet, find new roads. And Gatorade, Gatorade knows it all begins within. Win from within. Now an 80-yard drive and 10 plays, but Ohio State only got three. There's JT Barrett. Sitting right behind Cordell Jones. JT, a sensational season before breaking his ankle. Talked to him yesterday. He's got one of those little cart deals. I guess he's sitting on it right now. And uh, got a bone stimulator also on the side of his cast. And he'll be back good as new for next year. But the question will be, <laughs> will be the quarterback next yeah, year. There's the other one. Yeah. <laughs> Not a bad one there either. Yeah, two-time MVP of the Big Ten. Everybody should have such a problem, I guess, huh? Yep. Clinton's kick. Christian Jones won't mishandle this one. Brings it from two yards deep, and he goes down in a heap at the 12-yard line. Only a 12-yard return. Corey Smith, nice play on the special teams as we look back at Alabama's season. Fifth-year senior, Blake Sims, waited his time, named the starter over Jake Coker, and the tide went to 4-0 and on the year, then lost at Ole Miss and dropped to number seven in the AP poll. They won the next eight games, back up to number one in our college football rankings. Won the SEC championship game over Missouri, 42-13. to 13. Sims, 262 yards and a couple of touchdowns in that one. Well, and I think one of the stories right now for Alabama is that this is the second series and still no T.J. Yeldon. Now, Derrick Henry is a very capable back and has had a great bowl preparation, but the absence of Yeldon, a big factor for Alabama. He was in for that one play on third down, but never touched the ball, and Sims fires far side, complete. Even though there's two guys out there, you hear the chance of Coop for Amari Cooper, a pickup of six. There's T.J. Good first down play. T.J. Yeldon, I mean, when you talk about the combination of these two guys, both physical backs, Yeldon at 220, Derrick Henry at 240, and they wear you down during the course of a game when both of them are healthy. And here is Derrick Henry, tripped up and dropped for a loss of a yard. See, this is what Ohio State's defensive front needs to do, get penetration and use their athleticism. Michael Bennett is the guy who got penetration. He didn't get the tackle, but he was able to force Henry to try to bounce that outside. They're not as big as the Alabama offensive line, but they're more athletic. So here's another third down for the Tide. Remember, they were three and out on their first one. That's what the Ohio State fans are looking for here. Yeldon in there with Sims. 
Heavy pressure up the middle. Passes well overthrown for the intended receiver, Cooper. And it's another putting situation coming up for Alabama. Well, that time they had the matchup that they wanted with Cooper working on the freshman, Eli Apple. But that was just a clearly overthrown pass by Blake Sims in another punt situation. And again, the field position edge that Ohio State has maintained all season long is already starting to have an effect in this should have excellent field position after this punt. So Alabama failed on a third and three and then a third and five. So here in fourth down is J.K. Scott again, the true freshman. who's had a whale of a season punting for Alabama. Oh, and he got all of this baby. Wow. Jalen Marshall. And it bounces. He lost it, I think, in the lights. And now he's going to pick it up on a hop at the 12. Marshall looking for some help over there. Oh. And a helmet releasing hit on special teams by Ron Tanner. That's the second time that helmet's come off, and I think I know the reason for this one. Well, J.K. Scott has been a weapon for Alabama. That's his 19th punt of over 50 yards. Jalen Marshall really underestimated the leg of J.K. Scott and what looked like was going to be excellent field position turned out to be very, very average field position because of the punt of J.K. Scott. His longest punt of the year, 73 yards. And Ohio State starting field position. They have won a lot of battles and a lot of games because of winning the field position. Those hidden yards that are so important when you add it all up. Elliott, who had the long run earlier, has got another good one here, but the ball is out, and Alabama's got it. And it's Landon Collins. Eddie Jackson with the hit, Collins with a recovery. Well, Ezekiel Elliott was looking at the linebacker, Trey DePriest. Watch his eyes go inside. He's trying to stiff arm to Priest, and he doesn't feel Eddie Jackson coming from the backside. And that's who pokes the ball out. It was going to be a positive run, another good run for Ohio State against this Alabama defense, and Eddie Jackson forces the ball out. Ledge, that's Ohio State's offense's first turnover in their last 39 possessions. That goes back to the Indiana game the week before Thanksgiving. Let's see if the Tide can capitalize. And it's Sims with a run straight up the middle. Got about eight, dragging Adolphus Washington with him. Nice read by Blake Sims on the keep. Blake Sims ran for about 300 yards this season. And that's just to keep the defense honest, too. You have to prepare for that. You have to defend it. And now it's big Derrick Henry rumbling down the sideline. Touchdown. Side. The true freshman Cam Robinson, the left tackle, with an outstanding block. Watch number 74. Take Steve Miller completely out of the hole, and Derrick Henry shows you the burst for a big man that is pretty special. Adam Griffith in for the point after. Seven three Alabama. Only took two plays to cover 33 yards. And don't let that 241 pounds that Todd talked about fool you. This cat can motor. Derrick Henry, 25 yards for the touchdown. And the Tide on top. The DirecTV Mobile Studio has been traveling around the country this season following the biggest stories in college football. Buses here in New Orleans. Streets are kind of narrow. Derrick Henry, nothing narrow about that guy. No, I'll tell you. And uh, We knew he had a great preparation for this bowl game. When Yeldon was hurt late in the year, they sat him out for the Western Carolina game. They started Derrick Henry, and they said he didn't respond very well as a starter. But he did the following week against Auburn and the SEC championship game against Missouri, and he's off to a good start tonight. Griffiths kickoff deep and non-returnable. 
We talked about the combination, and it seems like Nick Saban at Alabama has always had two great backs at the same time, and no exception here. There's their numbers. Henry, 5.7 a carry. And each with 10 touchdowns. Now, well, 11 for Derrick Henry after that 25-yard romp a couple of minutes ago. You know, I thought coming into the game, Brad, one of the advantages that Ohio State might have was they've been better with the turnover game. They were plus nine coming into the game. Alabama minus one on turnover ratio. First turnover of the game goes to Ohio State, and Alabama capitalizes. And ask Florida State how big that can be. They gave up 34 today. Points off turnovers. Elliott, who's had a big run, but a fumble. Carrying it in his right hand, but still got the first down. But you see the, the philosophy for Ohio State. A lot of people think that Ohio State or Big Ten teams don't have the speed that they have in the SEC. Ohio State has SEC speed. Ezekiel Elliott can run as fast as any back in the SEC, and they're attacking the perimeter. The strength of the Alabama defense is if you try to run inside. Ohio State says, we're going to run this outside and make these big guys run and get tired. Noah Brown in as a fullback. Throws thrown away by Cordell Jones as we check in with Holly. Well, guys, on that last play, I watched Alabama linebacker Denzel Duvall really trying to chase Ezekiel Elliott, but he couldn't get there. Keep in mind, he is very banged up. Kirby Smart, the defensive coordinator for the Crimson Tide, saying, hey, if we can get 15 to 20 plays out of Denzel, that will be fantastic. But he is not 100%. You saw it on that speed trying to catch Elliott. Louisiana native, a big one. They got some big linebackers and always have had. Second down and 10. Elliott straight up the middle. Not much there. Yeah. See, that's where it's hard to run because of how big they are on the inside. They have big defensive linemen, and they have lots of them, and their two inside linebackers are both over 250 pounds. But you have to do that every so often just to keep them honest. Urban told us yesterday there are tree stumps in there. Yeah. <laughs> Kirby Smart, defensive coordinator, one of the best around at what he does. Third down and eight. Jones hasn't connected yet in this first quarter. Not going to get a chance here either, but he's going to run for it, and he's got the first down and quite a bit more. 20 yards, Cordell Jones. Well, when you bring pressure, if you don't get home, you leave yourself vulnerable to this. Nice move. He just faked out number 93, Jonathan Allen, who was unblocked. And you see the running ability straight ahead of Cardell Jones. He might not want to hurdle somebody at yeah. the end of a 20-yard run, though. They don't want to have to go to a backup quarterback number four. I think they need to challenge deep at some point here with Devin Smith. The step in, the step back, and the throw on the sideline is incomplete again, intended for Jalen Marshall. See, right now, what Alabama is trying to do is defend the run with two safeties. That makes them stronger in the pass coverage. If Ohio State is able to run successfully and force Alabama to bring a safety up into the run defense, then they'll have openings down the field to throw the football. See, right now, Ohio State has one safety, and Ohio State is changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Three wide outs, including Elliott, the running back in a slot to the bottom of your screen. They have yet to hook up with Devin Smith, their long ball man. It's going to be a run all the way here. Jones in trouble. Down he goes at, about at the line of scrimmage. He maybe got a half yard. And then Collins showing why he's an All-American as he comes up to make the hit. Tom Herman, the offensive coordinator, right there with the glasses, the new head coach at Houston, will join his... Uh, that job, when his duties here at Ohio State are done, whether it's after tonight or after next week. Third and long situation now here at the 41-yard line. Two times on third down, Cardell Jones has scrambled for a first down. Let's see if Alabama doesn't drop more guys. They're going to bring an extra one, including Collins. And the ball is long and caught by Devin Smith. All he does is catch long passes. He is as good of a deep ball receiver as I've seen in college football. He judges the ball. There were two defenders. Eddie Jackson and Jabril Washington were there, and he ran by 
two. That's just poor fundamental defense, particularly for the safety, Washington, to let somebody run by you on the back end of the defense. But Devin Smith judges the deep ball and catches the deep ball as well as anybody I've seen. He's got 29 career touchdown catches. They average 37.6 yards. And nine touchdowns on passes. 20-plus uh, yards. Here's another one. They're taking a look at this, but he got his right foot in before he skipped out of bounds at the one-yard line. Well, and this has been the Achilles heel of the Alabama defense this year. As good as they've been against the run, they have had major problems defending the deep ball. That's the 40th completion of 20 yards or more against this Alabama defense. Auburn burned them bad in the Iron Bowl a couple weeks ago by just throwing the ball down the field and letting those receivers go after it. And that's that's what Devin Smith does as well as anybody. I don't know what, if any, effect it would have had on that ledge, but Landon Collins came on a blitz, so you're one safety short yep. right there on that pass. There's what Todd's talking about. Well, Cordell Jones on third down on this drive, on third and eight, he ran for 12. On third and nine, he hooked up with Devin Smith for 40. And so here the Buckeyes are. Knocking on the door, first and goal at the one. Empty backfield. Alabama was a man short. They hustled DJ Petway out there. This might be Cordell Jones all the way on a run. Whoops. Picked up. His own fumble, gonna be dropped though back at the nine yard line by Collins. Yeah, that's just the first things first. Cardell's number was called, but he just took off before he secured the snap. It was not a bad snap. It was just Cardell Jones in too big of a hurry to try to run it into the end zone. And again, this goal to go defense for Alabama comes up with a negative yardage play. Atlanta College came in with 91 tackles to lead Alabama in that department, and he's leading them in that department here in the first quarter. We mentioned this earlier. They've only given up three rushing touchdowns this year. This is more of a passing situation probably for the Buckeyes back at the nine-yard line. Jones has all day. And a fire sidearm and incomplete. It is complete to Van Etz. The tight end. And it'll be third and goal. Trying to regain the lead, the Buckeyes trailing seven to three. And again, Alabama changing up its defensive personnel. Ohio State's offense already waiting at the line of scrimmage, which is just inside the four yard line. Alabama going to more of a nickel defense, pass rushers instead of run stoppers. Jones, quick drop, quick throw, incomplete. It was Marshall, the intended receiver that was broken up by Nick Perry. Well, he had him. Marshall had a little bit of separation on this out route. Pretty well thrown ball. It was hard. It had some mustard on it for a short throw, but a catchable pass. And again, you go back to the mishandled snap when they were right about the one yard line that set them back. And now they have to settle for another field goal attempt. Nurnberger had a 22 yarder earlier in the quarter. This one will be from 21. And from the right hash. Trying to make it a one-point game. Nurnberger does with 5-18 remaining in the first quarter. But again, Alabama's defense dug in when they had to and forced the field goal. Welcome back to the All-State Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. Our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Kick off any drive with tires that return superior performance. Goodyear, more driven. Two goal to go possessions for Ohio State and only two field goals to show for it. Yeah, they had six plays in goal to go situations and gained minus three yards. And that's, uh, you just don't know how many opportunities you're going to get in a game like right. this where you have opportunities to score touchdowns. And they had to settle for field goals twice. And again, Cardell Jones with that mishandled snap on first and goal at the one was the main culprit in why they only got three last time. Christian Jones will feel this kick at the goal line. And out 
to the 20, maybe the 21 for him. Well, Alabama has a one-point lead thanks to the touchdown run by Derrick Henry. And as we take a look back in this play, as Amari Cooper runs his man off on the perimeter, great blocks on the edge by the left tackle Cam Robinson, the right, the left guard Ari Kwanjo. Cam Robinson, number 74, 6'6", 323-pound, true freshman. The first true freshman to start at left tackle for Alabama since former first-round pick Andre Smith did it back in 2006, and he has been an outstanding player in his first year at that position. Lane Kiffin said to us yesterday, you want to know what a future first-round NFL draft choice looks like? Look at him. Here's Derrick Henry on the pitch. Broke one tackle, and out of bounds. That, that, was a late first down. that was a late hit. That was clearly, a clearly a tackle in the white area. So he's going to get about 12 plus 15. Land Clark, our referee. After the play, personal foul, late hit, defense number 13. A 15 yard penalty will be added to the end of the play. And not expect first down. Redshirt freshman Eli Apple on the corner with the late hit. Little fake inside, and then again, the speed of this guy at 241 pounds is pretty remarkable to get to the edge of the defense. First penalty of the game. And with the penalty tacked on, Alabama's got it all the way out of the 47 yard line. Henry, big hole on the left side, cuts it back to the 45, a pickup of about eight more. They're running away from Joey Bosa and running at Steve Miller, the other defensive end, and running to the big left tackle, true freshman Cam Robinson. Well, Steve Miller had to take over that spot from another one of the guys that would have been a big-time defensive lineman, Noah Spence, who was suspended. Incomplete pass here. It'll bring up third down at two. I think that ball might have been tipped. Michael Bennett got quick pressure and got his hands up in the way of that throw. I think he might have gotten a piece of it. Bennett had a huge game in the Big Ten Championship win over Wisconsin. Four tackles for loss, a couple of sacks, a couple of forced fumbles. He's that kind of disruptor. The senior, one of the captains out of Centerville, Ohio. Well, this is where that defensive line needs to make a play. Bosa, the All-American. Michael Bennett has shown up already. Adolphus Washington, number 92, has had a great second half of the season as well. Time for one of those guys to make a play. Alabama's going to take a timeout. Time out. Alabama. On a third down and two. Seconds in late. So they'll talk it over on the sideline. Lane Kiffin with his quarterback. NFL playoff start on ESPN. Cam Newton leads the NFC South champion Panthers against Larry Fitzgerald and the Arizona Cardinals. NFL playoffs wild card round come up Saturday, 420 Eastern on ESPN. Panthers will go into the playoffs with a losing record, yet they are the NFC South champs. A lot of people thought the team that plays here on Sundays would have been the winner of that division. The Saints, they finished second, a half game back. And Atlanta eliminated by the Panthers in their loss last weekend. Third down and two. Yeldon. P.J.'s got the first down at the 35. Well, they called the play on the sideline. They quickly broke the huddle and snapped the ball quickly and caught the Ohio State defense a little out of position. And T.J. Yeldon easily converts it into a first down. They'll spot it at the 36 and move the sticks there with just under four minutes remaining in the first quarter. This might be play action Amari Cooper time right here. Henry, boy, planted his foot and cut back inside the 30-yard line. Seven yards more. Well, they have found what they like on that side. And you always have the ability of the quarterback to read that and keep it off that same action if they overplay it to the outside. Henry straight up the middle, diving for what appears to be the first down. Diving right over Joey Bosa. One of the guys that's really critical for this Alabama offensive line is their center, Ryan Kelly. Very valuable member, makes all the protection calls, all the blocking calls. 
when he got hurt in the Ole Miss game, it really affected them, not only in that game that they lost, but the following week against Arkansas, they played without him, and it was probably their worst offensive performance of the season. Sims up to the line, and our backs out. Amari Cooper's in the backfield with him on first down. Sims heavy pressure, throws far side, completes, and it's Fowler, the fullback, very close to another first down. See, by putting Amari Cooper in the backfield, you know he's going to attract a lot of attention. He stayed inside, and the defense focused on him, and they let Justin Fowler alone on the outside. Cooper went in motion out of the backfield, and Fowler was wide open on the sideline. So Alabama back in the red zone with a first down at the Buckeye 15. And that's not too good. T.J. Yeldon back in the ball game. They fake the pitch to him. Sims on a bootleg. Throws on the run. Touchdown, Amari Cooper. Wow, he just turned Duran Grant around. Just completely turned him around. He faked inside. And watch number 12, Grant, get just all twisted up. And that's an easy throw and catch for Blake Sims to the best wide receiver in college football. 15th touchdown reception of the year for Cooper. And for Blake Sims, touchdown pass number 27. Extra pointers right down the middle. 79-yard drive in a little over three minutes. This was the capper. Blake Sims has the ability to move, to be a running threat, and to throw on the run. Nice little misdirection off the bootleg. And Blake Sims finds his favorite target. Favorite by quite a bit, yeah. as a matter of fact. Over not that DeAndre White's not a good one, but he's only got 37. Yeah. And that was one of number 118 right there on the touchdown catch. And, and that is amazing because, you know, everybody in the building over the last half of the season knows you're going to throw the ball to Amari Cooper. But to Lane Kiffin's credit, they did a great job of moving him around and finding different ways to get him the ball. And to Amari Cooper's credit, his smarts and his football intelligence to, to know how to play in all those different positions. A lot of receivers can't do that. It was never a problem for Amari Cooper to learn different positions within Lane Kiffin's passing game. Curtis Samuel waiting back deep for Ohio State. And he'll get a shot at this one from the two-yard line. Oh, only about a 10-yard return. Great coverage down there. Our Darius Stewart on the special teams in on the stop. Well, celebrating its 10th year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets All-State. Next contributions to participating universities, general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. And since 2005, All-State's contributed more than $3.8 million in scholarship funds. Not good starting field oh. position here for Ohio State again. And again, Ohio State coming into this game, one of the best in the country, starting on their own 35-yard line. That's what they average. But the Alabama kick coverage teams have been outstanding so far in the ballgame. Marshall trying to get wide with it. He's not going to get there thanks to Eddie Jackson. Only a two-yard game. Ohio State continuing to try to attack the perimeter of this Alabama defense. That time, very well played by Eddie Jackson. You have to maintain leverage on the football and not let them get outside of that outside defender. Eddie Jackson, very fundamentally sound on that play. Pistol set here with Elliott behind Cardell Jones. He fakes it to him. Runs out of time. He's got to get rid of it. Might be a safety. No signal yet. Oh, they're going to. Wow. They're saying his quarterback progress was stopped. Cardell Jones got stuck there. He didn't know if he should throw it away. He doesn't want to make a mistake. Xavier Dixon, the best pass rusher, just manhandled the right guard. 
Billy Price and got to the quarterback. I don't know where his progress was stopped. He was progressing right into the end zone. Well, he pulled him back into the end zone. So they start at the two-yard line, and it's Elliott straight up the middle. And now they've got a first down and some room to work. Bill Lamagne is our rules expert. Nick Saban's going crazy on the sideline. Bill? I think we've got a good call. That defender pulled him back from the field of play into the end zone. Excellent spot by the wing official. Now the fact that Cardell Jones didn't want to throw the ball away almost created a bigger problem. But credit the pass rush of Xavier Dixon getting there against Billy Price. Well, the quarterback making only his second start as a Buckeye can talk things over on the sideline with a break here because we've come to the end of the first quarter. We played 15 and number one Alabama leading the Buckeyes of Ohio State 14 to 6. Welcome back to the All-State Sugar Bowl here in New Orleans. Just about set to start the second quarter. Number one Alabama with a 14 to 6 lead. Brad Nessler, Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe, and a bunch of those kind of folks along with us. <laughs> That's houndstooth to the max right there. Alabama, a couple of touchdowns. One on the ground by Derrick Henry. One on a Blake Sims to Amari Cooper touchdown pass. Cameron Johnston's got a punt from near his own goal line. Christian Jones has had some big punt returns and kickoff returns over his career for Alabama. He's back deep. And he's going to have a play on this one at around the 30-yard line. Reversing his field. Not anybody over there to block for him, though. And he gets about six on the return before he's run out of bounds by Cam Williams. Well, pretty good return by Christian Jones, but I want to go back to the opening kickoff. And this could have been a disastrous play for Christian Jones because he touched it. This was a live ball. That's why there's no official signal. And if it weren't for the alertness of DeAndre White to cover this ball, if Ohio State would have fallen on that, the game would have started with an Ohio State touchdown. And we've already seen how difficult Ohio State has had trying to get a touchdown against this Alabama defense. That could have been a critical mistake to start the game for Alabama. So now the tide at the 39-yard line. Two tight ends in there, and Henry behind Sims. Amari Cooper in motion. They're going to throw it to him. And a shoestring catch at the 45-yard line. And that's the matchup that they want against the redshirt freshman Eli Apple, the field corner for Ohio State. He's going to be an outstanding player. 6'1", 198 pounds out of New Jersey. But again, Amari Cooper just so difficult to defend. He has great speed, size, and strength. Now Cooper's in the slot. They're going to throw it to him again out there, looking for a blocker, puts his hand down, and he's dropped by Darren Lee, the outside linebacker. Nice play in the open field. And you see that tackling technique. One of the things Ohio State has really tried to adapt kind of comes from Pete Carroll and the Seattle Seahawks. Luke Fickle talked about the rugby tackling style. Aim for the hip, head behind, wrap and roll and that's it to perfection right there third down and three T.J. Yeldon back in there he'll get the carry and he's not going to get the first down Bosa was there first and Curtis Grant the middle linebacker who made the hit and it's fourth down excellent job good penetration first by Bennett he occupied the guards block Leon Brown and then Bosa was able to get across the line of scrimmage as well this defensive front is the strength of the Ohio State defense, and they forced a critical fourth down play right there. Jalen Marshall will wait on this punt coming up from J.K. Scott, who already has a 73-yarder to his credit tonight. Right now, he'd just like to knock one out of bounds at about the five and keep it out of the hands of Jalen Marshall. And he is a tall drink of water, too. I was checking him out <laughs> before the game on the field. He is long and lanky. Play game. Number yeah, they're going to give him a little more room to work. 6'4 and about 185 pounds of water. 
Interesting what just happened there. Because of that penalty, which I think Alabama's okay with, Ohio State had a safe punt, had their defense on the field. Now that they back them up five more yards, they put their punt return team on. Fair catch, taken around the five. Nice kick, nothing else Marshall could do about it. 53-yarder with great hang time. So Ohio State trailing 14 to six, but they've got it back in Cardell Jones and his offense waiting on the other side of this timeout. Ohio State hoping to play for another national championship in 42. They went nine and one, didn't attend a bowl game, but were number one. 54, 10 and 0, beat USC in the Rose. 57, nine and one, beat Oregon in the Rose Bowl. Finished 10 and 0, and undefeated, uh, and defeated USC in the Rose Bowl. And then 2002, 14 and 0, and beat Miami in the Fiesta Bowl. Urban Meyer doesn't have a national championship as the coach of Ohio State, but has two when he was in Gainesville and Florida. And he just wants to get back in the big picture, which is January 12th in Arlington. One of these teams will meet Oregon for the national championship. Ezekiel Elliott's having a great game so far, and he's got nine more yards. Yeah. He's over 100 already. Well, the last running back to go for over 100 against this Alabama defense was Trey Mason in the Iron Bowl in 2013. Nobody this season until now in Ezekiel Elliott. He's got 109. Here's another carry. Might got one more yard out of it, maybe. Jalen Marshall that time running it. Ohio State, you know, for the problems they've had in the goal line situations, this running game has been effective. Mostly outside on the perimeter, stretching out this Alabama defense, making those big guys run. And the biggest one, of course, was the 54-yarder by Elliott earlier in the game. What that does is it sets up play action, and Ohio State loves deep crossing routes on play action. Jones straight drop here. Pressure coming. Again, he retreats near his own goal line. Throws, and it was caught for about a one-yard gain by Michael Thomas. He comes in as their leading receiver. Well, you see why Alabama wanted to get 15 or 20 plays out of Denzel Duvall. Even though he's not 100%, he is an outstanding pass rusher as a stand-up defensive end. He's a very versatile guy, and he was the guy that forced Cardell Jones to leave the pocket on that play. They completed the pass, but no gain on it, so it's second down and 10. Empty backfield for Cardell Jones. Five-man rushing and one, and got a hand on it. Nice pressure. Might have been Ashawn Robinson. Yeah, Ashawn Robinson ran right through Billy Price, the left guard. They are big and physical up front. Watch 96 run right through 54 and get a hand on the football. So now it's third down and 10. This is dangerous territory right here for Cardell Jones. He has to be very smart with the football. Three receivers to his left. This is where Alabama creates confusion. Going to go back across the middle and a strike to Michael Thomas. First down. Beautiful read by Cardell Jones. He looked left. He came back to the opposite side to a single receiver. There was a corner blitz and a nice job by Michael Thomas sitting into that soft area of the defense and giving a target to his quarterback. On third and 10, he got 14 on the completion. And you see the arm strength and the throwing ability of Cardell Jones. At 6'5", 250, he can see over the defense. And even if there's bodies around him, he can step into it and make good, solid throws down the field. Buckeyes first down at their own 29. Elliott up the middle. Xavier Dixon and Ashawn Robinson again close the door after a pickup of a couple. It'll bring up second down and eight, and we're approaching ten and a half minutes remaining second quarter. Really important drive right here for Ohio State, if nothing else, to flip the field. We talked about how they've had a field position edge and that that was a big key to their success. The average starting field position tonight in five possessions was their own 15-yard line. So getting that first down and moving the ball out a little bit 
is huge for them right now. Seventh play of the drive. Here's the play action and a throw that's intercepted. Picked up by Cyrus Jones coming the other way with a convoy. Jones knocked out of bounds at the 15 and the tide has got it back. An obvious miscommunication between Cardell and his intended receiver, Devin Smith. Devin Smith never turned to look for the ball. And Cyrus Jones read it the whole way. Watch Devin Smith. His head is down. He's running down the field. Cyrus Jones' eyes are back at the quarterback. And he makes a play on the ball. And Devin Smith didn't even know it was thrown. Third interception of the year by number five. And a 32-yard return. So Alabama will set up shop at the Buckeye 15-yard line. Derrick Henry, as you look behind him, in the backfield with Sims. Two tight ends, power set. Sims flushed out of the pocket, throws to the sideline and completed it down around the 11 to his tight end Vogler. Very nice poise by Blake Sims that time. Joey Bosa coming on pressure and Blake Sims just kept drifting back a little bit to buy some time and then complete the pass to Vogler. Remember one turnover in their own territory already cost them seven points. Could happen that they're going to add to it here. As Alabama on second and six, just a little lob out to Vogler. He had to catch it twice. He's going to be short of the first down by about a yard. Nice concentration by Vogler to stay with it. Looked like he was going to drop it. Juggled it and kept possession, but it's third down and a yard. Ohio State got a stop on the last third down and short situation. Last 16 possessions, they've given up 12 touchdowns. They don't want to bend and let the tie get a quick one here. They're up to the line in a hurry, and it's Yeldon. And I don't think he got there. Nice play by the Buckeye defense. Lee and Perry, the linebackers. Well, it starts up front. Good penetration by Michael Bennett again. He doesn't get credit for the tackle, but his ability to take up two blockers and stay in the hole forced T.J. Weld yelled in wide and brought up fourth down. Alabama's eight out of 11 on fourth down conversions this year. They're going for one right here. Huge play for both teams. Yeldon's a tailback. He'll get the call and the first down. First and goal, Alabama. See, that time, Ohio State did not get penetration, and that enabled T.J. Yeldon to get a full head of steam hitting up into the line of scrimmage. See, no white shirts across that line of scrimmage and an easy conversion for T.J. Yeldon. Short yardage, offense, and defense is all about leverage. The low man wins. That time, Alabama was the winner. First and goal just outside the one. It's Yeldon again, and he'll walk in. Touchdown, Alabama. <laughs> Costly turnovers yeah. by Ohio State. Nice job by the tight end, Vogler, blocking on Joey Bosa on that play. He might have got away with a little bit of a hold on the outside of the jersey, but he was able to keep Bosa inside, and Yeldon was able to bounce outside for the touchdown. Griffith's extra point is good. 8.07 remaining in the first half. A miscue by Cardell Jones. Second turnover by the Buckeyes in their own territory. This one picked off. Cyrus Jones took it 32 yards. T.J. Yeldon did the last yard on his own. 21 to 6, Alabama. Next. Friends know where you are. You also let burglars know where you are not. Talk to an Allstate agent. Make sure your home is fully protected because mayhem is everywhere.
The 2015 Allstate Sugar Bowl is brought to you by Allstate, proud supporters of college football. Are you in good hands? Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. And Taco Bell, bringing you the first ever student section at the college football playoff. Live Moss. Back in New Orleans, 21 to 6. Taco Bell and the college football playoff provided a thousand tickets to students free of charge so they could come down to New Orleans cheer on their teams. They'll provide another 1,000 tickets to students for the uh, college football playoff national championship on January 12th as well. Nice trip to Crescent City. Probably a few headaches in that section this morning. And we do wish you a happy new year. Curtis Samuel from around the goal line. Whoa! Hello, Reuben Foster. Their kick coverage has been outstanding so far. There is a flag down. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Kicking team number 21, Toss Connie. His first in the game. A 15 yard penalty. First down. That's Maurice Smith, number 21. And celebrating the hit by Reuben Foster, I guess. But this was a serious hit. High kickoff, good discipline coverage. There's the hit by Foster. I didn't see and what there's Smith the did, to No, he stood with right over top of him as he was on the ground. There's the hit, good clean hit. And then after this, there's oh, Maurice there Smith is. standing over top of him. Okay, good and call. That, that's a good call. Yep. Best starting field position for Ohio State because of the penalty. They work from the 29 with eight minutes, two seconds remaining till halftime. Elliott, a tough yard. That's about it. You know, when we talked to Urban Meyer the other day, he said when talking about Alabama, you put on film, you say, where's a weakness? You're always looking for weakness. There are none with Alabama. So when that's the case, you cannot help a team like that. And Ohio State has helped them. They've turned the ball over twice. They've not converted when they've gotten the ball inside the five-yard line when they could have scored touchdowns. And uh, it's hard to beat a complete team like Alabama when you help them. Flags are down as Elliott's going to go down at the line of scrimmage. Reggie Ragland and DJ Petway out to make the hit. One of the things that's impressive to me about this Alabama defense and their defensive front is the depth. They have eight to ten guys that they rotate through those defensive down three or four guys. And they all kind of look the same. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> too many players in the backfield. That play, that penalty is declined. Turn down. And of course, Nick Saban declines a penalty because there was no gain out of the play, so they'll take the down instead, and it's third down and long. Cardell Jones needs to be on target on this third down and ten. If he can get the pass away and he is on target to Marshall who spins his way across the 50 to the 45 a Nice job of hanging in the pocket because this is pretty good pressure and it's collapsing around him But Cardell does a nice job of staying in there and finding Marshall on the deep crossing route pick up a 26 So Ohio State back in Alabama territory They've got two timeouts remaining. Plenty of time to work here at the 45 of Alabama. Whoops. Elliott took a step forward. Yeah. Again. He lost his balance just preparing for the play to start. First down. This is the area of the field where Urban Meyer and Tom Herman like to take deep shots down the field. Once they get inside the 50, now that penalty backs them up to the 50, but this is still the area where they like to try to attack. Devin Smith, their deep threat guy, is down here at the bottom of the screen. On first and 15, empty backfield, pump fake by Jones. Throws off his back foot, but he completed it very 
short game. Actually got six out of it. Beg your pardon. Back across the original line of scrimmage to the 44. Michael Thomas on the sideline, the their guy, leading receiver. The guy they might go to here is Marshall in the slot, probably guarded by a safety or a linebacker. Jones fires far side into coverage, incomplete. Antenna for Corey Smith, and a nice play by Eddie Jackson. Yeah, Eddie Jackson just squatted on that route. You know, what Cardell Jones read there was single coverage on the outside, one-on-one. -on -one. You expect your guy to win that battle, and Eddie Jackson read the route and was in perfect position to make a play on the ball. So here's a big third down for Cardell Jones. It's been pretty good on third down. Needs another one here. Deep middle. Caught by Marshall inside the 20. See, when Marshall lines up in the slot, he's going to draw coverage if it's man from a safety or a linebacker. This is zone coverage, and he does a nice job of finding the void in the middle of the Alabama defense. Couple of 26-yard completions on this drive, and now Jones going to the end zone. Incomplete intended for Marshall again. Now, they have hit some plays on third down, Brad, but they have been averaging third and nine or more in those third down situations. The percentages are not in your favor if that's what you're facing on third down. But Cardell Jones on this drive in particular has hit a couple big ones. Then in the red zone and had to settle for field goals. They need a touchdown here. Just over five to play in the quarter. Haven't seen a screen pass. Maybe a chance of getting the ball to Ezekiel Elliott by throwing it to him. Second and 10 at the 18. Elliott will come in motion. That's where he's going with the football, just as Todd called it. Almost ran out of bounds, but stays in. And he's got it down inside the 10-yard line. The reason that was such a good call by Tom Herman is because Alabama's defense has done a better job defending Ezekiel Elliott running the football. So find a way to get him the ball where there's not so much traffic around him. Throw it to him. They're going in a hurry. They only got about a yard on it. They lined up and snapped it. It'll be second down a goal. Now this is absolutely critical that Ohio State scores a touchdown here. Not only because they're behind 21 to 6, but this is the third time they've been in goal to go situations and they've had to settle for field goals on two times. They have to find a way to get the ball in the end zone here. Curtis Samuel in the backfield with Jones, who's calling for it. Rolling to his left, comes back to his right. Nice play by Eddie Jackson on the tight end, Vanette. Oh, I guess he threw a flag. That came late. I guess he was a little bit early. He made contact. He was making a play on the ball. He got there a little early because the ball was floated. The ball was so soft coming out there. <laughs> Alabama was out of position. They were running a guy on the field late. Watch how this ball is just kind of floated to the backside. And because it's hanging in the air, Eddie yep. Jackson, even though he's making a play on the ball, the contact was early. Good call. And a first down at the spot. So it's right at the five-yard line. Curtis Samuel now in for Ezekiel Elliott, their other running back. Man at the tight end moves. Into the slot, Marshall coming around, gets the flip. And that's all he's gonna get. Lost a yard, I think. Nice play by Trey DePriest. The reason that play's tough is because they're running into the short side of the field. It's a sweep, but they're running it into the boundary, and that enabled these linebackers and Trey DePriest to get there and make the play. Ooh, Landon Collins is the guy that's down on one knee. All-American safety. Yep, he's their best player. Looks like his right shoulder he's he's concerned about or favoring. He's made a lot of tackles already in this first half. And one of the leaders of their defense, a captain. Louisiana native, as a matter of fact, playing back in his uh, home state. We'll check on him when we come back. Four minutes remaining first half. 
Landon Collins is headed to the uh, locker room for Alabama. There he is. We went back two plays because the previous play, he looked to be favoring his right arm or shoulder trying to help out on the tackle. So we went back two plays. And this is how he was injured. Yeah, Evan Spencer, who's a 210-pound wide receiver and an excellent blocker, a good, clean block. And you could see right away after the contact, Landon Collins favoring that right arm or right shoulder. Derek Williams will come in to take his spot. But the story for Ohio State continues to be eight goal-to-go plays, Minus five yards, only one of them has gained any positive yards. They have to find a way to get this ball in the end zone. Second down, a goal at the six. Elliott with Jones in the backfield. Gets the carry. Slipped a little bit. Keeps his legs moving. And he got to at least the four, maybe inside the four. And now we got an Ohio State player down. That's Jacoby Boren, the center. Very valuable member of this offensive line as well. This offensive line, when the season started, they replaced four starters, and they weren't very good in the beginning of the year. We had the Virginia Tech game. They struggled as a unit. But they have gotten better and better. It's been the same five guys that have started the whole season, and they have gotten better as the season has worn on. But Jacoby Bourne is the leader, and now in a critical third and goal situation, a new center coming into the ball game. Chase Ferris. They better get some snaps with Cord Cardell Jones right now on the sideline. Born in the middle of the pack there. Not the biggest center in the world. Got rolled up on yep. badly from behind. They list him at 6'1. He may not be even that tall, about 285 pounds, but Urban Meyer said, I would go to war with him any day. Uh, how tough he is. And he's trying to tough it out right now. And Pat Elfline, who is the starting right guard, is going to be the center. Chase Ferris, number 57, is going to come in in his place at guard, I believe. Elfline doing the smart thing right now, taking some snaps on the side, leading up to this critical third down play. And Boren looks to be up and at it anyway. And he gets right into that offensive line huddle. Try to fire him up as he's got to come off the field. You just cannot settle for another field goal here. Not only does it keep you behind on the scoreboard, but psychologically, it'll wear you down. You got to find a way to crack the code here and get into the end zone. On this drive, they've converted a third and ten and a third and nine. They want to get a third and goal right now. Marshall crosses the field. Elliott leads the way. Touchdown, Ohio State. That one puts him right back in business. Great job by the left side. Billy Price and Taylor Decker, the left guard and tackle. They get a double team inside, and then Decker moves off to the second level. The new center, Elfline, gets a nice block, and Elliott able to run it into the end zone. Critical touchdown for Ohio State. Nuremberger in for the point after. Up and good. A little over five minutes for the Buckeyes. Took them 12 plays. Three for three on third down on the drive. Including this one. The cap is 71-yard march. Ezekiel Elliott makes it 21-13. Next deal is... But does get you great deals on used stuff from right now until the end of the game. The National Championship Trophy presented by Dr. Pepper will be handed out on January 12th in Arlington, Texas. And the winner here tonight will take on Oregon. Big win by the Ducks in the Rose Bowl earlier today over Florida State. And so at 8.30 Eastern on the 12th, we'll figure out who's the best in college football. Everybody saw all the points that Oregon scored, and you automatically think Marcus Mariota, and he had a great ball game. Yeah. But that Oregon defense was pretty salty today against Jameis Winston and the Seminoles. Christian Jones and DeAndre White waiting on the kickoff. Jones runs up on it at about the three-yard line. 
Trying to get it to the middle of the field and goes down to the 10. Great coverage again. That's the second time Corey Smith made a big play on special teams tonight. Perfect kick and great coverage. We'll go back to the Ohio State touchdown. I think Alabama was expecting pass, and the motion by Jalen Marshall is going to just kind of freeze these guys a little bit. They don't attack the line of scrimmage, and that enables Ohio State to get into their blocks and get the ball in the end zone. Alabama thinking pass on that third down, and Ohio State hit them with the inside run for the critical touchdown. Last couple of games for Ezekiel Elliott, how big has he been? 220 in the win over Wisconsin, the Big Ten title game, and 117 tonight. He, I think, gets overlooked a little bit yeah. when he came in with over 1,400 yards rushing, but that's because as Landon Collins is coming back out, you think about the Big Ten and some of the backs they have. Melvin Gordon, obviously, Wisconsin. Tevin Coleman from Indiana. David Cobb in Minnesota. Amir Abdul, Amir Abdullah in Nebraska. And, and Jeremy Langford, who had a huge game for Michigan State today. So, so many great backs in the Big Ten. Sometimes you get lost in the shuffle a little bit. Amari Cooper broke one tackle. And then knocked out of bounds on the far sideline as we check in with Holly. Great news for Alabama fans. Landon Collins standing here at the tunnel ready to come back out on the field. He's adjusting his shoulder pads. He's moving that right arm and that right shoulder just fine right now. Also another update, Jacoby Bourne, the center for Ohio State. They have taped up that ankle. It's been an injury that's bothered him previously this season. Looks like he's going to try to go. Well, he's a tough dude. We'll see when they come back out on offense. But right now it's Alabama's turn with a second down and four. Derrick Henry with Blake Sims in the tie backfield. They fake it to him, throw out to DeAndrew White, who's dropped after maybe a yard gain by Lee. Well, great play by Darren Lee. He had a hold of the ankle and didn't let go. If he doesn't make this tackle, DeAndrew Wright, White probably squirts forward for a first down. Darren Lee was blocked. He got a hold of the ankle and wouldn't let go and force his third down. Ohio State would love a stop here and the chance to get the football back if they can prevent a third and three. Blake Sims throwing the balls, hit his last eight passes. Well, here's Cooper right here. They've got him kind of protected. It will be a pass. It will not be complete. DeAndrew White dropped it. And he let it get to his body. Instead of catching it out in front with his hands, he let it get all the way to his body, and it bounced right off of his shoulder pads, incomplete. Well-thrown ball by Blake Sims. DeAndre White just doesn't secure the catch. Boy, it's been feast or famine for the Tide. They have three touchdown drives, and now they have four three and outs, and that's there's nothing in between. Fourth down, and J.K. Scott to punt. He can let this one fly as long as he wants to. Again, oh, a beauty. Fair catch called for way back at the 22-yard line by Marshall. Well, that is a weapon now to have a punter like that. Well, he was an ESPN first-team All-American and a Ray Guy finalist, and I can see why. Now, Capital One Bowl Mania continues tomorrow. Number 11, Kansas State, taking on number 14, UCLA, and the Vallejo Alamo Bowl at 645 Eastern on ESPN. Then Washington will battle Oklahoma State in the Ticket City Cactus Bowl at 1015 tomorrow. So that's your Friday night viewing tomorrow on ESPN. Right now, the All-State Sugar Bowl, 21 to 13. Ohio State with the ball back, a minute 32, and a couple of timeouts to work with. J.K. Scott, four punts, 59.5-yard average. Not bad. <laughs> Man. Van at the tight end in motion. Jones, the play fake, fires, completes. Michael Thomas, he broke a tackle, and he got out around the 37-yard line. Minute 24, plenty of time. Ohio State with two timeouts. You want to get that first first down when you're working a two minute offense either at the end of the half or end of the game getting that first first down is critical. And Michael Thomas still down after that reception. One twenty four. One two four. Nice second effort went through the would be tackle of Cyrus Jones. Thank you. And in doing so. You hope it's just cramps at this point. 124 left. Sure. 
Michael. Thomas redshirted last year and came in. Keyshawn Johnson's nephew as the leading resort, uh, receiver catch wise for Ohio State this year. You mentioned Devin Smith the big play artist of the bunch. Well he and Cardell Jones both spent the fall of 2011 at Fork Union Military Academy in Virginia. Uh, a one year prep school after high school. A lot of times guys go there if they need to mature a little bit if they need to get their grades right. It's a very uh, rigorous program excellent football program as well and both of them benefited from their time there. So he started off cold he's warmed up does have that costly interception that ended up turning into seven points but he's had some big third down conversions on that last drive that led to Ezekiel Elliott's touchdown run and he's all by his lonesome right now in the Ohio State backfield JT Barrett looking on. Jones plenty of time going to throw short underneath complete Corey Smith got to the 41 that's about all. Geno Smith made the tackle and then we're down to 110. Haven't seen the deep crossing route for Ohio State something that they really like. Again an empty set. Cardell Jones loads fires down the middle complete inside the 45 to the 40 to Van at the tight end. Clock will stop as they reset the chains. Pick up of 19. Again, Ohio State with two timeouts. Plenty of time here. Landon Collins back in there, as Holly said, after coming back out of the Alabama locker room. 40 seconds left. Some valuable time yeah. being wasted. Jones steps up in the pocket. Now he's going to run with it straight ahead and he's still running with it. Cardell Jones inside the 15. 27 yard rumble up the middle. That's the third time we've seen him scramble up the middle and his size and strength gets out of the tackle of Ryan Anderson for the first down. Now he's rolling right to throw and just throws it away wisely to stop the clock with 19 seconds left. Well, and I think what the bench needs to remind Cardell of right now is that they have two timeouts. They can't afford to lose valuable time like they did on that one possession or the one play a few plays ago. Manage the clock right now. He's got a lot on his plate, a lot in his mind right now. Very important that he manages the clock here in the final 19 seconds of the first half. They're already in Nuremberger's field goal range, well within his field goal capabilities, although that's been a kind of a shaky spot this year for Ohio State. At the 13-yard line, second down and 10. They may have to use a timeout right here because the play clock was down. Yep. There was confusion in their formation, and they had to burn a timeout right there because of confusion. Cardell Jones, though, we talked about third down conversions on the previous drive. Talk about the biggest run of the night for him. It's going to be right here. Well, watch his strength at 6'5", 250. That's a defensive end, Ryan Anderson, and he runs right through that tackle and rumbles for the first down. You know, there was a time about five minutes ago, Todd, where you looked at this and it was 21 to 6, and we kind of looked at each other and said, uh-oh. Yeah. And you got to give Ohio State credit. They have hung in and not only hung in, they're going to cut this thing a little bit shorter before halftime. Absolutely. And, and the critical thing was they found a way to get the ball in the end zone. If they would have had to settle for another field goal and only have nine points on the board, it would have been devastating. They got it in the end zone. They got the good special teams coverage. And now they got a chance to add to their point total. You would think they'd be sure to get three, but they want more, if at all possible. With 19 seconds left, end around, and now a pass coming up. Spencer to the end zone. Thomas. Did he get a foot down? Yes, touchdown. Yes. Boy, did they ever do it with style, huh? Well, Cyrus Jones is in perfect position. This is not a play that fooled Alabama, but the ball is thrown in the right spot. Did he get a foot down? Wow. I think he did. There's his left foot. 
There's still some green showing before you see the chalk. Wow. What a catch and what unbelievable balance to what stay a, in bounds. What a catch, but what a throw by a wide receiver. Evan Spencer threw that ball in the only place that his guy could make a catch because Cyrus Jones was in perfect position to make a play on the ball. It had to take a perfect throw and an acrobatic catch on the other end. Evan's dad, Tim, who was a great one in Columbus when he was a Buckeye and his kid just lit up the crowd with that touchdown throw to Michael Thomas. Beautiful. 13 yards. And while they're continuing to look at it, it's 21 to 19 right now with 12 seconds to go. I mean, Cardell Jones could not have thrown that ball any better. Evan Spencer put it in the only place he could. Now a, this game has swung in the other direction. What a call by Tom Herman, too. 19 seconds left in the half. They've had trouble in goal-to-go -go situations. They go for the trick play, and they pay it off with a touchdown. I guess there's some thought that you might want to go for two here to try to tie it, but there's a lot of football left in the second half, so it's an extra point by Nuremberger coming up. And Ohio State won the toss and deferred, so they'll get the ball to start the third quarter with momentum. Again, Michael Thomas kind of quiet in the first quarter. They fake the pitch to Marshall and then Spencer on this beauty. Ohio State with 348 yards of total offense in the first half against this Alabama defense. That's beautiful. That is. 14 unanswered points in the last two minutes and 43 seconds. And it can change just that quickly. And now we got a ball game. Let's check in with Holly. Well, Urban Meyer has long told us that Evan Spencer is a program guy that does everything right. He said he does so much for that. I trust him with everything. Coach really backing up those words, trusting him in a huge goal line situation right there to throw a pass. That really is everything for the senior wide receiver. An outstanding blocker on the perimeter. Doesn't get the ball thrown to him that much this year. Only 14 catches coming in. But outstanding blocking on the perimeter. And in that case, <laughs> can't throw it any better. Nope. And once he let it go, he knew it. <laughs> Kick high and short. Jones runs up on it at about the 17, and he'll get out to the 29, maybe the 30. But just six seconds remaining now. I would expect Alabama to just take a knee here. Check out the balance of yardage here. Ohio State way bigger in the total yardage category, but Alabama still bigger on the scoreboard. But remember, 14 of those points came off turnovers. Right. And the field position up until the last couple possessions was really in Alabama's favor. They had short fields to work with because of the turnovers. Ohio State started taking care of the ball. They started covering kicks, flipped the field, and made this a close football game. A one-point football game at halftime. Great surge by Urban Meyer's Buckeyes in the final minutes of the second quarter. AT&T brings us inside the headset as we head down to Holly Road. Well, Coach Saban, what do you have to change to account for Cardell Jones, their quarterback, as a runner? Well, I'm not worried about the runner. I'm worried about third down. I mean, they've converted every every third down except maybe one. Uh, and, you know, we had them three third and tens, and they still converted each one. And we're, we're not executing on defense. We're making a lot of mental errors and letting people go and not covering people properly. So we just got to finish. We had to do a better job in pass rush lane so he doesn't scramble. So, you know, it's just how we're executing. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Now, 70 percent for Ohio State on their third down conversions as they're only down one point at halftime. Coming up on the Buick Halftime Report, John and Mayday and Lou and Tim Tebow will all be along with you. But first half analysis, update on Oregon and a lot more. We're at halftime of a great All-State Sugar Bowl. One point, Alabama lead.
On the Sugar Bowl stage, the Buckeyes and the Tide attempt to take one step closer to ruling college football's brand new world. Spin Derrick Henry rumbling down the sideline. Touchdown. They fake the pitch to him. Sims on a bootleg. Throws on the run. Touchdown, Amari Cooper. Just outside the one. It's yelled at again, and he'll walk in. Touchdown, Alabama. Elliott leads the way. Touchdown, Ohio State. That one puts him right back in business. End around, and now a pass coming up. Spencer to the end zone. Yes, yes. touchdown. And we welcome you back to New Orleans and the All-State Sugar Bowl, the 81st edition of this classic, and it has been one. Inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome halftime, 21 to 20, Alabama by a point. Ohio State had touchdown drives of 71 and 77 yards in the first half. They had two other drives of over 70 yards and ended in field goals. They had a couple turnovers. Partner, we got we got a good one going on right now. Yeah, and this game was teetering in the balance yeah. for Ohio State at 21 to 6. They settled down, they righted the ship, they started making some things happen. They ran 20 more plays than Alabama did in that first half, and right now we have a heck of a ball game. Well, and Nick Saban told Holly, I think they converted every third down. They didn't, but they did go seven out of 10, and that's more first downs given up in a half by Alabama than anybody all year long against them. More big plays, too, in that first half than Alabama was able to generate. And Curtis Samuel taking knee as we check in with Holly. Well, Urban Meyer said it's a pretty obvious conversation. Don't turn the ball over. He said we can talk about the red zone and doing better in the red zone all day long. But the bottom line is don't turn the ball over. He thought his quarterback, Cardell Jones, really settled down later in that second quarter. He said that's what we need. We need to get that momentum back and just play calm and settled. And let's see how he does with the opening possession of the third quarter. Mentioned big plays, impact plays, runs of 10 yards or more, passes of 20 yards or more. Ohio State had 12 impact plays in the first half. Alabama only two. Jacoby Bourne, by the way, the tough guy, is back in at center. He's not going to miss this one. Jones, quick play fake and a slant complete for a first down. So his first pass of the third quarter is good for 11 to Michael Thomas, who made that sensational catch in the corner of the end zone before halftime. Nice job getting off tight coverage. Pass was a little bit behind him, but a nice job by Michael Thomas reaching back to make the grab. First down at the 36. Empty backfield for Cardell Jones. The throw, Thomas again from the other side this time. Short of a first down, but a good throw and catch. Cyrus Jones made the tackle. See, throwing on early downs against Alabama is very smart because as big and physical as their defensive line is, they're not great pass rushers on early rundowns. Right out of the gate here in the second half, first two plays, Cardell Jones throwing the football. Those tree stumps that Urban Meyer talked about, not great pass rushers. They're stout against the run, though. And here they're not. Elliott across midfield with a first down. And Boren got all tangled up with Trey DePriest, the middle linebacker. So this is an impressive start yep. in the opening minute. Well, Ohio State has to be a very confident football team. They close the gap. They scored right before halftime, and they come out of the gate here in the third quarter with positive momentum and positive yardage. Pistol set here with Elliott behind Jones. Play clock down to three. Blitz. Here's the deep cross. And a deep ball. And Smith in and out of his hands. Cyrus Jones was covering. Well, Cardell Jones looks very confident. He's standing strong in the pocket. They run two guys off. You have the deep cross, Evan Spencer coming underneath. Not a bad chance going down the field against single coverage. Not able to make the connection, but they also had the crossing route with Evan Spencer coming underneath that.
Jalen Marshall in motion. They're going to flip it to him. They tried this one earlier. Whoa! And what a hit by Ragland. And that's about the second or third time that he's been hit. Third time, and his helmet's come off. And so he's coming out for another play. He's in a better chin. Yeah. Put that chin strap a little tighter. Or get a double buckle or something. Because Ragland, that's 255 pounds coming full speed. Knocks the headgear clean off. And that's exactly what they're working on is the chin straps to get him a little tighter. He's going to feel that one, though, for a few plays, I think. Third down at eight. Ohio State 7 of 10 in that first half. Most of them long yardage like this. Five out of six when it's third and eight or more. Jones waited to the last minute and let it fly. And he's got Devin Smith. Touchdown. Got a flag down. And the Buckeyes have the lead. Alabama went man coverage on that third and long. They've been playing mostly zone on third down earlier. They go single coverage, and Eddie Jackson fell down. And Devin Smith does what he does his whole career. Catch long passes for touchdowns. That's his 30th. We mentioned those touchdown grabs average almost 38 yards. That one went 47. Nuremberger for the point after. And the Buckeyes are shocking everybody right now. 27-21. Third down and long. Cardell Jones has hurt them scrambling. Alabama goes man coverage. Eddie Jackson's okay, he's okay, and then he trips. And Devin Smith pays it off. And here's an interesting note. Devin Smith coming into the game had caught touchdown passes in 21 games. Ohio State, 21-0 in those games. There's the face mask at the end of the play. That will be assessed on the kickoff. Let's check in with Holly. Seven feet and a quarter in what Holly said in finishing second of the Big Ten. Actually jumped seven one as a high school senior. And he has lit up the crowd here. The Ohio State portion of the crowd anyway is there leading by six now. 21 unanswered points in the last five minutes and 11 seconds of clock time. And again, now the kick will come from the 50. And just kind of pooch it up high. Taken out of the 11 by Jones, and he didn't even get to the 20. Well, the inaugural college football playoff national championship presented by AT&T comes your way. January 12th on ESPN. We know who one of the teams is, the Ducks of Oregon. We'll find out the other half with two more quarters to go here, either Alabama or Ohio State. And then we hope you join us Monday, January 12th, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. That guy would be going for a fifth national championship. Went up by 14 or more. And they were up 15, 78 and two. But right now in the short end by six. Here's an eye backfield for one of the first times tonight with Jalston Fowler, the fullback. They fake it to Yeldon and Sims in trouble. Scrambles out of trouble, first down and a bunch more. And the ball came out of the end, but I think he's down. He is. At around the 39-yard line. Well, we've seen Cardell, Cardell Jones do this for Ohio State. Blake Sims, first down pass. Protection breaks down. He goes right up the middle. Picks up a block from T.J. Yeldon. And a big game. Ohio State just barely got set defensively. Alabama's ready to go, and Yeldon takes it around the corner. 
Top to the 45-yard line. Well, this could have been a disaster. Yep. Ohio State had guys about six yards away from the line of scrimmage, and Alabama was getting ready to snap it. One of the changes for this Alabama offense that Lane Kiffin brought, part of it was when he was the head coach at USC going against Oregon, up-tempo, no huddle. Nick Saban wanted to do it. Lane Kiffin decided to do it, and it's paid dividends. Sims is leveled by Lee. Never had a chance to get rid of that football. This is an inspired group on both sides of the ball right now for the Buckeyes. Well, T.J. Yeldon is going to get tangled up with Austin Shepard. The tackle in the back, they both ended up on Bosa, and nobody picked up the extra guy. He should have been blocked by one of those two guys, probably T.J. Yeldon. The last thing Alabama wanted to do to start the third quarter was give up a touchdown to the Buckeyes and then have a situation like this, third down and eight. Sims flustered again, down again. This time it's Michael Bennett. Well, we talked about Ohio State being so good on third down in the first half. Alabama was one for six on third down. Make it one for seven now. Good pressure by Michael Bennett. Spin move on the guard, Leon Brown. That's just great individual effort by an interior lineman rushing the quarterback. One of the captains, a big fellow with a big play and forces a punt. And this young guy's been sensational kicking the ball. Ohio State has now a return man back. So he's kicking it to nobody. And it's going to take a great roll. Wow. Well, that flipped the field in a hurry. All the way down to the five-yard line. I mean, even if you're going for a punt block, you have one guy back. I don't know what the deal was there, but they've got Ohio State pinned in their own territory with a 65-yard punt. We talked about the interesting situation of quarterbacks for these two teams before the game started. Blake Sims, 10 out of 14 tonight, 17 to 29, 236 yeah. for Cardell Jones and only 60 for Blake Sims. He does have a touchdown pass. And Cardell has one touchdown pass, that long one, the 47-yarder to Devin Smith the last time they had the ball. He did have a costly interception that turned into seven. But, uh, boy, he has started off 0 for 5. He's awake now. And that's his M.O., throwing the ball down the field. And that has been the Achilles heel for this Alabama defense all season. The combination of the inability to have an outstanding pass rush and the inability to play consistently the deep ball in the secondary. Elliott straight up the middle, got him a little room to work out around the nine. A lot of game left. I think this is a critical possession right here for the Alabama defense. They have to try to get some momentum back on their side. They got the punt. I don't know if it was a mistake. I'm, I'm believing it was a mistake by the Ohio State return team to not have a guy back there. They pinned him deep. They've got to keep him here and try to get a three and out for second, their offense. Second time that their punters put him at the five-yard line tonight. So far, they've moved it four yards further. And now Jones will keep it himself. And that big fellow at 250 pounds might have just picked up the first down. It's going to be close. It is the first down. <laughs> You know, he's not a whole lot smaller than the guy he ran right behind the center, <laughs> Jacoby Boyd. I mean, he's almost as big as Jacoby. He's definitely taller than him. Yep. That's a load running up through there. That was a big time run to get it out to a first down and out the 15 yard line. He doesn't have to be standing on his own goal line to take the shotgun snaps. Back to Elliott and Ezekiel. Across the 20 to the 22. Holland. Well, Landon Collins had gone to the locker room before the half. He did come out and play in one series. But then he left early again, running to the locker room with the athletic trainer, Jeff Allen. He has come back out with a new wrap on that right shoulder. He is playing now, guys, but he is their most physical safety for Alabama, maybe their most important guy on defense. How does that shoulder affect his ability to get up there and hit guys? Well, for sure. There's Devin Smith right here. Again, the deep threat guy. In the slot, difficult to cover him when he's in the slot. Second down and three. Play fake, quick throw, oh, intercepted. No, not quite. Cyrus Jones, <laughs> boy, he jumped that route, and I thought he had another one. And
He might have been off to the races to the end zone, but he couldn't hold it. And they were dialed in on this one. Cyrus Jones looking at the quarterback the whole way. Slips inside the block. That would have been huge. Wow. Now it's third down and three. Shortest third down they've had tonight, though. And they picked up eight of their 11. Straight ahead. And again, the quarterback running over would-be tacklers. They haven't called very many designed quarterback runs because of their lack of depth at quarterback. But when they've called it, Cardell has responded. He scrambled on his own a few times. That was a designed quarterback run to pick up a huge first down. Of course, when Braxton Miller was quarterback, he was almost one of the best running backs in the Big Ten. JT Barrett, a shifty runner. And then the power of 12 gauge. Jones throws complete. Spencer. And he's out across the 40. Of course, Evan Spencer, if you missed it, had one of the huge plays in this game. An end around pass. The first pass he's thrown in his life as a collegiate player was for a touchdown. It's just interesting for me to watch Cardell Jones right now because the more this game goes on, the more comfortable and confident he looks. He's not afraid to hang in there, is he? Nope. <laughs> he's made some throws with some company with him in the backfield. This run's going to be stopped short on the first down. It'll bring up third down and a long yard as Ezekiel Elliott getting helped up there, but got it to the 42. There's JT. Now they're trying to run it wide here, and that's not going to work either. Nice pursuit by Reggie Raglan to stretch it out, and it's a loss of three. Yeah, Ohio State tried to go with a quick snap. It was a little bit of a trick play using a wide receiver as a running back. They tried to quick snap it, and Raglan made a beautiful play. Fought off the block of Vanette, the tight end, and made the tackle for a loss of yardage. That was a stop that Alabama desperately needed. And Ohio State's going to have to punt it away. As out comes Cameron Johnston. They got the stop, but because Ohio State was able to convert a couple first downs in that drive, they're in pretty good position to punt this football away. Christian Jones waits back around the 15. And the rugby-style punt. End over end. Jones is just going to get out of the way and hope it makes it to the end zone. But I don't think it did. It's at the one-foot line, and it's Devin Smith. That's not the only thing he does is catch long touchdown passes. Starters play on special yep. teams for these guys. Well, that's why it was so important to make a couple first downs. Flip the field. Almost as good as scoring. The 2015 All-State Sugar Bowl is brought to you by AT&T, presenting sponsor of the college football playoff national championship game. The Quicksilver card from Capital One. Earn unlimited 1.5% cash back every purchase, every day. And Honda, start something special. Alabama deep in its own territory, thanks to Devin Smith downing that punt at the one-yard line. Ohio State, a six-point lead. And Bama at the one. They've started some drives inside their own 10 several times this year. They do have three touchdowns, but they've got a couple of turnovers as well. I they've got a long ways to go to try to get the lead back here. I wouldn't be surprised if they throw it on this first down play, even though they're inside the one. D.J. Yeldon is behind Blake Sims. They'll hand it to him, and he's cut down after a pickup of one. Darren Lee again. Boys made a lot of tackles, it seems, tonight. Or some big plays. The redshirt freshman linebacker. Alabama, two possessions here to start the second half. First one started on their own 19. And this one inside the one. Amari Cooper has been kind of quiet the last few possessions for Alabama. Sims 
about three yards deep in his own end zone to take the snap. And they're going to keep it on the ground. And Yeldon broke it out there for what looks like a first down. Well, he looked quick on that play, too. Yeah, he did. Been bothered by a hamstring. They thought he would be 100% by now. Did not start the game, but he looked awful quick bursting through the hole on that one. How about that block by Jalston Fowler that gave him the room to get out to the 12-yard line? Great look at it from above. Fowler's a very important key to this offense. Voted one of the captains. Senior automobile. That's Derrick Henry back in at the tailback spot, and he'll get the toss with Fowler in front of him. Derrick Henry down the sideline. Big run by the big fella who has a touchdown tonight. And that time he picks up 21. Well, they outflanked him. They brought the tight end. O.J. Howard in motion. He got a block. They pulled the tackle, Cam Robinson. And then, as you mentioned, Fowler out there leading it. They got on the edge. They outflanked the Ohio State defense. And Derrick Henry, with that speed, got a big gain out of it. All the way to the 33. So a drive that started at about their own two-foot line. Has him a first down at the 33-yard line. That's Fowler in motion again. They fake the toss and a throwback to Fowler. Head-on collision there after a four-yard pickup. Pretty nice play by Blake Sims. It didn't gain a lot of yards, but when you run a bootleg like that, you've got to get your head and eyes around right away in case there's somebody still there. Ohio State played it very disciplined. And he did a nice job, Blake Sims, of getting his eyes around and completing the pass. The Fowler now comes out as a wide receiver to the bottom of your screen. They'll give it to Henry, and he's going to lose a yard, maybe two. Bennett in Washington in on the stop. Third downs tonight. Ohio State has owned it. Alabama has suffered because of it. Well, and look at the average yards to go for Alabama. That, that's manageable distance, but a very poor average so far. Yeldon back in there. He and Fowler switch places. Sims, quick throw, intercepted. Picked off by Steve Miller. Miller. Defensive lineman dream. Touchdown. What else can happen in this game? What a perfect call by Luke Fickle and Chris Ash. They anticipated on that third down play that Blake Sims would look for Amari Cooper on a slant. They dropped the defensive end on a zone pressure right in the way of that throw. They brought inside linebackers to rush the quarterback. They dropped the defensive end, and he was right in the throwing lane in front of Amari Cooper. Nurnberger's extra point. Up and good. 321 remaining third quarter. I noticed a sign earlier that said the Steve Miller band was playing in the Superdome later on this month. Steve Miller band just struck here from the defensive line of Ohio State. The big guy with the pick. And 41 yards later, Ohio State another touchdown. Let's take a look at tonight's good hands play brought to you by Allstate. Todd. Well, perfect design. Ohio State is going to rush linebackers here. This is Steve Miller right here. He is going to drop into zone coverage and be right in the throwing lane in front of Amari Cooper. Ohio State guessed perfectly on that third down play. And not only do they get the interception, they do one better. They get the touchdown. Looked like a tight end number 88. Ran like a tight end once he got his mitts on it. 28 unanswered Buckeye points in a game that looked like it was going to go sour in Ohio State's direction when it was 21 to 6. And now look what it is.
And now the pressure's on the number one team, the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Christian Jones from just inside the five. Oh, and he got leveled again. Boy, the special teams have been special. That's three big hits by Corey Smith, the wide receiver playing on special teams. You know, there's a physicality to this wide receiver group of Ohio State, and I don't think it's any accident because Urban Meyer is an old-school coach. And as he started as an assistant coach, he was a wide receiver coach at Illinois State at Colorado State, at Notre Dame, before he became the head coach at Bowling Green. He's an old school physical football coach, and the wide receivers on this team are very physical. This is the largest deficit this year. If you're wondering the previous, they were down 12 in the Iron Bowl to Auburn. They came back to win that one. Now they got their work cut out for them again. Sims, deep sideline, nobody home. Well, and, and Amari Cooper is showing some signs of frustration a little bit. You see him coming back to the huddle, trying to get on the same page with his quarterback. It has been a very quiet night for the Bolitnikoff winner so far. He's had a few catches, but no big plays, and that has been rare for him, particularly in the last half of the season. Six catches for 39 yards is all tonight. He's had three games of over 200 yards receiving. Nowhere near that tonight. Second down and 10. Play action. Sims fires. This time he's got it complete to Amari Cooper on a first down. Pick up a 15. Nice job using a stack formation. They have he and DeAndre White kind of run off the line of scrimmage at the same time. Very tough to double cover a receiver like that in that kind of a formation. And Cooper with a nice catch. Every head, everybody has a look over to the Alabama sideline. Ironically, you mentioned that Auburn comeback. It was after Blake Sims' third interception in the game that things turned around. Sidearms just one middle screen, Derrick Henry. Henry broke a couple of tackles. Derrick Henry trying to outrace everybody all the way to the 15-yard line. Six three, 241 pounds, and explosive. He goes 52 yards, and Alabama's back in the red zone. They actually spotted him down at the 17. T.J. Yeldon trying to cut back, looking for a block from his quarterback. And a stiff arm as he goes out at the 10. Quite a response right now by Alabama and Blake Sims. That's been kind of the mark of him this year. One of the reasons why his team re rallied around him so much, his resiliency. And this team showing some resiliency on this drive, trying to get back in the ballgame. Voted the most inspirational player on the team for Alabama. He's inspiring things right now. Yeldon, first and goal for the Tide at the five. Big Leon Brown, the right guard, with a nice lead block on that play. They need another touchdown in the red zone here to tighten this game back up. First and goal, Alabama at the Ohio State five. Sims play fake, lobs it for Vogler, and he couldn't handle it. A little too far out in front of his tight end. Had to get it over the arms of Rashad Frazier, number 17, the defensive end who was rushing. Frazier, six foot four. Not yeah. able to get that pass down enough. Yeah, remember, Sims is only a six foot quarterback. 
Amari Cooper listening intently to his quarterback as he trots out to the top of your screen with Christian Jones. Wouldn't be surprised to see a quarterback run design here. Fowler, the fullback, is going to lead the way for exactly what Todd called. Touchdown, Alabama. Two great blocks here. Kawanjo, the left guard. Jalston Fowler, who we've seen doing a great job as a lead blocker. And Blake Sims showing the resiliency that he has shown all season in his one year as a starting quarterback. Gets it in the end zone for the touchdown. Adam Griffith, point after good. Just over a minute remaining in the third quarter. This thing is really getting interesting. Blake Sims waited his time at Alabama to be the starting quarterback. He's just cut it to 34-28. Fifth-year senior out of Gainesville, Georgia, with a touchdown, and it's 34-28. Nice execution on the touchdown run. Couple key blocks. Austin Shepard's going to get a block on the linebacker, McMillan. And then you're going to see the guard, Kawanjo, and the fullback both hit Rashad Frazier. He's not going to know what hit him because he gets double teamed here. First it's Kawanjo, then it's Fowler. And Blake Sims gets right in the hip pocket and takes it into the end zone. Impressive drive and nice resiliency shown by Blake Sims after the pick six to get Alabama right back within six. 84-yard march in seven plays. Just took him a little over two minutes to make it a one-possession football game. Samuel's not going to bring out the kickoff. Nick Saban's time dominated college football during his eight seasons, three national championships in five years, 09, 11, and 12. Seven straight, 10-win seasons, which is an SEC record, and number one in the Associated Press Bowl at some point in each of the last seven years. Of course, the new college football playoff, they came into this one with the number one ranking. Number four, Ohio State has the lead. Number two, Oregon took care of business in the Rose Bowl today over number three, Florida State. So we've got about 16 minutes to figure out who joins the Ducks in Arlington. Quarterback run all the way for Jones. Picks up five. I think the reason that Ohio State is doing this, even though they take the risk of getting their quarterback hit, I think Alabama came into the game not expecting many quarterback runs because of the depth issue. They knew if JT Barrett was there, that was a big part of Ohio State's offense. And Ohio State is recognizing that and calling Cardell's number more as a design run. Second down and five from the 30. Here comes a blitz off the corner. Elliott takes it the other way and got a couple before he ran into trouble from Trey to Priest and Reggie Ragland, the two linebackers. That might be the end of three here. Final 10 seconds. And what is a thrilling 81st edition of the All-State Sugar Bowl. One quarter to go. Both teams are going to hold up those four fingers. Who will be holding up the fingers at the end of the game? Stick around with us. We'll find out together. State Sugar Bowl set to begin with Todd Blackledge and Holly Rowe. I'm Brad Nessler, and this has been everything we hoped for, and then some. Final quarter 34 28, Ohio State with a the lead. They're 9 out of 13 on third down conversions tonight. Cardell Jones is 5 of 7 throwing on third down. All five completions have gone for first downs. Elliott joins him in the backfield. He'll throw again. No, he won't. He's going to keep it. He's going to go down. Great play by Jonathan Allen. 
on that defensive front for Alabama. And I think that was by design to run. This was not a scramble. I think this was a design run because Ezekiel Elliott is leaking through to get a block on the linebacker, and it's just played beautifully by Jonathan Allen. First team all SEC, Allen, and a big time play there to force the punt. Johnston's last punt traveled 60 yards. That was with the roll. This one end over end. Fair catch taken around the 26 yard line by Christian Jones. Lake Sims has led the Crimson Tide at three come from behind wins this year. October 11th at Arkansas, they're down 13-7 in the fourth quarter. He hooked up with DeAndre White, a six-yard score. Gave Alabama the lead and the win. November 8th at LSU. Alabama, game-time drive at the end of regulation. He hit DeAndre White in overtime for that win. And then we mentioned this one earlier. They were down 36-27 late in the third before he led the Tide to 28 unanswered points to come back and beat Auburn 55-44. to And again, that Auburn game, he threw his third interception the first possession of the third quarter Auburn scored to go up by 12 and after that he settled down and led his team back similar situation here tonight Derrick Henry straight up the gut for about seven Boy, at some point when you're a defensive player you got to get sick of looking at number 27 well, and T.J. Yeldon has played a lot here in the second half more than he did in the first half and has looked good when he's been in the game Second and three, Henry again, diving, and somebody's helmet came yeah, off in the Michael middle. Bennett. It's Michael Bennett, he's shaken up as well. Well, he made the tackle. He was the one who got the legs knocked out of Derrick Henry and lost his helmet. He'll have to come out for a play. He's looking for his helmet right now. He might be a little woozy. I think he might have gotten Derrick Henry's knee on that helmet. Looks like it. He's had a heck of a ball game. Sure has. You know, he has played well down the stretch in the Big Ten Championship game. Four tackles for loss. He forced two fumbles. When he's healthy and when he doesn't have to play 60 or 70 snaps in a game, he is really disruptive on the inside. And he's been a disruptor tonight. Henry got the first down at the 36. Sims going to throw it out. Amari Cooper on the corner. And Cooper's close to another first down. They have it. That's a play they stole right out of the Auburn playbook. Auburn ran this for a touchdown against them in the Iron Bowl in 2013. Quarterback run, but you've got that little bubble screen as an outlet instead of a pitch man. They react to the run. You throw it out to Amari Cooper, and you get another first down. Alabama fans are saying we don't want to steal anything from Auburn except a win, but they did steal that play, and it's a first down at the 47. Sims pump fake once. Now he's in trouble, trying to dance out of it. Somehow did. Blake Sims. Well, he's going to get planted by Darren Lee, but he made something out of nothing there. Yeah, did a heck of a job to get out of trouble but not able to throw the football downfield anywhere. Good pressure by Ohio State and Darren Lee, and we've called his name a lot. He's been very active tonight from his linebacker position. So it goes down as a sack the third of the night with a loss of two. Bennett's back in there. Sims under center. Blitz coming, he fakes it to Henry and rifles it far side, and it's incomplete, well short of Amari Cooper, who was covered by Eli Apple. It's a long throw for Blake Sims from the left hash, throwing a deep comeback route to the right sideline. He had been great on third downs, leading the country this year. That's not the case tonight. Not only that, it's the longest third down of the night for right, the Tide. Right now, if you're Blake Sims, don't take any unnecessary risks. There's a lot of time left. You're one score down. You can flip the field if you have to punt. Don't force a bad play. Middle screen to Henry, and he's going to be dropped by Curtis Grant, the senior middle linebacker and one of the captains. Nice play by Grant.
Yeah, and with this punter they have, you never know. He's put a couple down around the five-yard line tonight. Great leg for J.K. Scott, the freshman out of Denver. And he's only averaging 61. Yeah. Jalen Marshall will wait back inside the 10. And again, kicks it way into the lights here of the Superdome and almost mishandled. That would have been a disaster. Jalen Marshall gets his hands out there and snatches it right around the eight yard line. 11 17 remaining in the fourth quarter. Great game going on here in New Orleans. State is six point lead. They've got the ball back here in the fourth quarter. Cardell Jones in his second start has 18 completions, 243 yards. One of the ways he's getting some big plays is against the two deep coverage, finding that soft spot in the middle of those two safeties behind the linebackers. Usually it's been Jalen Marshall finding that spot. No other weaknesses in the defense. Cardell Jones delivering the ball down the middle of the field. And 153 of those 243 yards have been on third down. Third time they've had to start inside their own 10-yard line because of the putting of J.K. Scott. And he's hit Jones down at the four. D.J. Petway got him from behind. Xavier Dixon was coming in front of him. He did not feel Petway coming from behind. And for one of the rare times on a first down play, an outstanding pass rush by Alabama. And luckily for Cardell, he held on to the football. So that's why it was so important to not make a bad play by Blake Sims. Punt the ball, put Ohio State in some duress deep in their own territory. Elliott, only to about the five. Trey to Priest in the middle of that pile, along with Raglan. Raglan's a little shaken up at the end of that tackle. He's had a heck of a ball game. Since he became a starter this year, he has really taken off. Junior out of Madison, Alabama. Todd mentioned the size of the linebackers. Raglan 254, DePriest 250, and Duvall 254. Well, the problem right now is that Duvall is not 100%. Dylan Lee, another backup linebacker, is not 100%. There you see, just kind of led with the head and gets up very woozily at the end of that play. Reuben Foster is another inside linebacker who will probably be in in this situation and they're taking reggie to the locker room ezekiel elliott who had such a big first half for ohio state 117 yards rushing in the first half only 24 yards on six carries in the second half Third down and a bunch. Jones standing on his own goal line. Into the end zone to throw. Gonna go deep. Left side out there and broken up by Cyrus Jones. Out of pass intended for Devin Smith. Devin Smith looking for a call. Pretty well played by Cyrus Jones. I mean, that is living on an island if you're a cornerback. Man coverage. The wide side of the field, it's just you and him. And you know what a deep threat he is. And Cyrus Jones able to make a play on the football. Little hand fighting going on between both of them. And now it's going to be a putting situation for Ohio State. And their putter is standing almost on his end line. As you look behind Cameron Johnston. This should be great field position for Alabama regardless of how he hits this one. Christian Jones flags fly. He didn't get the playoff. Now he's really going to have a cramped situation back there. 
He is running out of real estate back there. This is going to be a shorter snap than he would like to handle. I don't know if Alabama might try to come with the pressure up the middle or not. I don't think you need to. You're going to get great field position no matter what Christian Jones does on this end. I think and another flag's down. I think Ohio State moved again. He's going to be playing quarterback under center to kick this thing pretty soon. You know, the unfortunate thing for Ohio State is they are in the Alabama end of the field. The majority of the Alabama fans are right down there, the Alabama band, right down where they're snapping this football in this part of the field. Very hard to hear. You can see how close the line of scrimmage is to the putter now. Johnston got it out of there in a hurry. High kick, but short. Jones has to clear out of the way. It takes a bounce backward. It's going to be at about the 23-yard line. A 21-yard punt. Sometimes that's the uh, the part of that rugby-style kicking that, that comes back and gets you. That ball, you want it to spin back if you're kicking down towards the end zone, but you don't want it to spin back at midfield. An unfortunate bounce for Ohio State. So here's the opportunity for Alabama at the Buckeye 23-yard line. Trailing by six and almost to the red zone already without taking a snap. O.J. Howard, the tight end, comes out and lines up on the left side. We haven't seen anything from him tonight. And now Amari Cooper in motion. Sims rolls right, fires, intercepted by Von Bell. A wasted opportunity again for Alabama. Well, Alabama tried to do a little bit of a trick play. They ran people on late. They sent Amari Cooper out wide late, and they tried to get it to O.J. Howard. Von Bell was not fooled at all and is there to slip in and make the interception. Huge play for the Buckeyes. The 2015 All-State Sugar Bowl is brought to you by All-State, proud supporters of college football. Are you in good hands? The Lincoln Motor Company and the first ever NKC. And Taco Bell, bringing you the first ever student section at the college football playoff. Live Moss. Ohio State's got the ball back courtesy of Von Bell's sixth interception of the year. Trouble. Jones got out of it or it would have been a safety. Still a loss of four with the sack. Second time. Cardell Jones very close to a safety. If it weren't for his size and strength, he probably wouldn't have gotten this one out of the end zone. But he fights forward out of the end zone to avoid the two points for Alabama. Jerron Reed with the pressure from the inside. Now he finds himself in his own end zone again to take the snap. On second and 14, throws low as a caught. No, it bounced. Intended for Evan Spencer. The other thing you have to be careful of, there hasn't been a holding call on Ohio State, but when you're throwing from this part of the field and your quarterback is in the end zone, you don't want to get a holding penalty resulting in a safety either. Third down and 14. There's his third down passing that we talked about. But this is a big one here. Gonna roll the throw. 
That one's caught, but it's well short of the first down. I don't think that one was caught either. No, I guess not. So Ohio State's right back in the situation they were earlier, having to punt with the line of scrimmage. Inside the 10. That's three straight three and outs for the Buckeyes offense. Remember last punt only went 21 yards with a backward bounce. See what Johnston does this time. Oh, they hit him. There's the flag. Oh, boy. And Jones is buried on the other end. The last time they did not go after him. They set up a punt return. It was a short punt. And they got great field position. This time they came after the punter Johnston and ran into him. Now, is it five yards or is it more? Whoop, there goes the headset. That Herb would admire. suggest it's not personal foul. <laughs> if it was a personal foul, I think he'd still have the headsets on. Here's the call upcoming from Lamb Clark. Running into the kicker. Defense number 24. Is that going to be the line? So the line of scrimmage will be the 45-yard line with 8.46 remaining in the football game with Alabama trailing by six. Another look at the penalty. And Urban Meyer's reaction. Six remaining in the fourth quarter, still a six-point game. And the All-State Sugar Bowl here in New Orleans. Want to bring in Bill Lamani, our rules expert, on that last play yes. on the running into the putter call that infuriated Urban Meyer, Bill. Well, we had the kicker displaced on this. He wasn't roughed. He hits the upper leg. Kicker spins on this and goes down. He kind of put a little accent on it with the spin. <laughs> but he was only displaced, not roughed. There's the little demi plié, whatever you call it. And now the headset's going to get displaced. Yeah, I don't know where that went. That, that baby's out there someplace. <laughs> and Alabama at the 45-yard line. The Andrew White in motion. Fake the stretch play, and Sims wants to throw, and now he's going to run with it. Gets what he can and gets out of bounds right about midfield. Well, after Blake Sims' first interception that was returned for a touchdown, he responded with resiliency and brought his team back for a touchdown to cut the lead to six. He threw his second interception when they had a golden opportunity to take the lead after the poor punt. Let's see how he responds this time. Again, that's been his M.O. all season, is resiliency, and that's why his teammates have rallied behind him so strongly throughout the year. Play clock down to five right now. Alabama might have to burn a timeout. There it is. And they do take a timeout, so they've only got two left. Alabama. That one interception that was returned for a touchdown by Steve Miller. That's the first pick six thrown by an Alabama quarterback since 2007. That's the one that's the difference in the ball game right now. Don't forget NFL playoffs start on ESPN. The Panthers, NFC South champions, led by Cam Newton against Larry Fitzgerald and the Arizona Cardinals, who are trying to piece it together with their third quarterback. NFL playoffs, wild card round, Saturday, 420 Eastern on ESPN. There's the difference in the ball game. Yep. Defensive lineman interception return for a touchdown. Fellow Canton, Ohio native, played at Canton McKinley for the Bulldogs. The football right at the midfield strike.
Derrick Henry got a first down inside the 45. I think Alabama will go back to being very fundamental here. Try a little smash mouth football, some play action off of that. The last interception Blake Sims threw, they were trying to go a little bit tricky and fool the Ohio State defense, and it backfired on them. It didn't fool Von Bell, and they ended up throwing the interception at the one-yard line. Derrick Henry now closing in on that 100-yard mark as well. Ezekiel Elliott all well over that for Ohio State. Here's Henry and a nice cutback. Got close to the 41. We talked about early in the ball game that Urban Meyer said to us he loved his preparation. He felt great about his team. His only question was, are we good enough? I think that question has been answered very well. They are definitely good enough to not only be in this game, to win this game, or to potentially play for a national championship this year. Straight drop by Sims on second and seven. Pressure coming from Bosa. He runs away from him, but only got to the 40-yard line. Nice job on Amari Cooper. They had Eli Apple in coverage with a safety, Vaughn Bell over the top. You know, four straight runs, but you got to think that they're going to have to put one in the air here on the season. Third in the FBS tonight, one for nine. Third down and six. You bring the tight end out here to hopefully draw coverage by a corner right here. Cooper up on top. Quarterback draw. Sims loses yardage. Darren Lee again. Darren Lee has played a heck of a ball game. He's coming on the blitz. He reads it. And he falls back in to make the tackle on the run. Red quarterback run immediately and made the nice play. Well, it's fourth down, but the good news is if you're an Alabama fan, number 15 has dropped three inside the 10 tonight, including two at the five. Alabama was a man short on their punt team. Scott, high kick again, bounces down, inside the five again. Wow. This guy's done a little bit of everything. You know, he's boomed the long ones, and he's shown the finesse kick as well. 524, time becoming a factor in this All-State Sugar Bowl. Bowl at 10-15 tomorrow night. Now, how important is field position? Ohio State's last three possessions, they've started at their own nine, eight, and five. And there's their fourth quarter offense. Minus 12 yards, no first downs. Alabama's hoping they can keep that statistic intact right here. Again, Jones at his own goal line. Gives it off to Elliott. And Ezekiel goes for about four as we check in with Holly. Well, linebacker was already positioned on this Alabama defense that had very little depth. It's a concern of their team, and so they have now lost two linebackers in this game, guys. Reggie Ragland just came out of the locker room in street clothes. He will not return. They previously lost Dylan Lee to a shoulder injury. He's in street clothes, so they're down to Reuben Foster and Sean Dion Hamilton in the game right now with Denzel Duvall. And Deion Hamilton's a true freshman. Jones, empty backfield, is going to run with it. Across the 10, puts the power into Cyrus Jones, but Jones got him on the ground. Picked up five. And Cardell's a little bit slow getting up after that run. Third down and one coming up. We're down to four and a half minutes. One possession game. Ohio State's missed their last four third down conversions. This is a short one, though. I'm not sure I wouldn't run him again. I'm not so sure I wouldn't give it to 15. Just got it. And Landon Collins shaking up again. Remember, 
playing with a bad right shoulder or upper arm, whatever. And he's on the turf again. On the last two plays, as they take a look at Landon Collins, Cardell Jones has gotten hit pretty hard. Collins hit him on this one, and then he got hit again by Nick Perry, the other safety. And that run by Jones is the fourth time tonight that he's rushed for a first down on a third down situation. Only needed one, and he got a little bit more than that. He's trying to get a quick breather here. <laughs> and Collins, well, he bounces up and bounces to the sideline to see if he comes back in after one play. That first down for the Buckeyes, that's the first, first down they've had since there was eight minutes left in the third quarter. And it was huge because the, the clock is on their side. Alabama with two timeouts. They're not in the area yet where they need to think about using them. But that conversion bought Ohio State some valuable time. Right now, Ohio State using as much of the clock as they can. The clock restarted after the injured player, Landon Collins, was taken off. And they can run about 20 seconds off the clock here. Ezekiel Elliott. And he's got an opening. Elliott off to the races. Can they catch him? No, they can't. Touchdown. The longest play from scrimmage allowed by Alabama this year. Good to Thomas, and it's a two-touchdown lead. Brad Holly talked about the lack of depth at linebacker. Sean Dion Hamilton, the freshman, that's him right here. Evan Spencer, we've already said he's a thumper as a blocker at the wide receiver. Watch the block he gets on the freshman linebacker. Key block in the play. Ezekiel Elliott gets behind that block. Billy Price gets a block on the safety, Nick Perry, and then the speed of Ezekiel Elliott does the rest. Evan Spencer has thrown a touchdown, and he just threw the block that may have secured the Sugar Bowl for Ohio State. The last two games for this young man, 40 carries, 450 yards, a career high of 230 right now. And he had a 54-yarder earlier in the game. This one takes the cake. 85 yards for the touchdown. Going into the Big Ten Championship, people wondered if the Buckeyes even belonged in the college football playoff. Then they took care of the Badgers, 59 to nothing. And right now they're up 42 to 28 on number one Alabama. needs offense or maybe a big play by Christian Jones here Jones got to the edge they'll drag him down but a nice return out to the 35 and he's hurt he almost got the seam he needed and then run down from behind and it's his lower right leg. 
And you can see that right ankle already heavily taped. Yeah, he pops up and will head to the sideline with a nice kick return. And you see that ankle getting twisted around as he's dragged down. How about Ezekiel Elliott the last half of the season? First eight games, he averaged 88 yards per game. He got better. The offensive line got better. And down the stretch, he's been as good as there is in the Big Ten and maybe in college football running the football. And right now, he's got an All-State Sugar Bowl rushing record. Here's a throwback and over the head of O.J. Howard. They've tried to get a kind of a tight end screen over here, and that didn't work. Steve Miller was reading that all the way. Miller, of course, had the big play, the 41-yard touchdown off the interception. That gave Ohio State the cushion, and then Ezekiel Elliott, and a two-point conversion has made that cushion bigger. And Alabama, remember, used one of their timeouts earlier. They only got two, and we've only got 3-12 left in the fourth quarter. They need some big plays. Sims trying to get him one. Going long. Got White out there. DeAndre White to the 15-yard line. Boy, how do you let this happen? You got a two-touchdown lead. You react to the double move. Watch the second move here. The safety jumped it. That was Tyvis Powell. And that's just a no-no in this situation. If you're Ohio State, nothing can get behind you. Keep everything in front. And a big opportunity here for Alabama with 2.48 left in the game. A 51-yard pass play down to the 14-yard line. Sims again. Trying to throw a middle screen, and that one ran into some traffic. Adolphus Washington might have gotten a hand on it. It was intended for Derrick Henry. The only good thing about that play for Alabama is the incomplete pass yeah, stopped the clock. Exactly. Because it wasn't going to go anywhere. A.T. Barrett, who was the starter the majority of the season up until he broke his ankle. And Cardale Jones, who's been very good tonight. Sims, and he throws this one away. Amari Cooper was the closest guy. Well, he threw it away because he knew Joey Bosa was coming free. Joey Bosa, who hasn't had a lot of activity in the backfield, but has played a solid ball game that time was very close to getting his hands on the quarterback. And Blake, Blake Sims is only one out of five on third downs tonight. He's got a bunch here. This is two down territory, though, so they don't need all ten right now. They missed their last seven third down conversions. They're in desperate need of a conversion here. First down would come at the four-yard line. Sims fires wide side completes. And a big hit over there at the five-yard line on Chris Black by Von Bell. And let's see where they're going to spot it. Fourth and about two, it looks like. Yep. And that's exactly what it'll be. And get this play in a little bit quicker if you're Alabama. You're two scores behind. And 2.15 and the clock running. Could be ball game here if they don't get this. Sims throws, caught by Cooper, touchdown. Ohio State was trying to call a timeout. Luke Fickle was trying to call a timeout from the sideline, and they couldn't get it done. The ball was snapped, and Blake Sims is able to find his main guy, Amari Cooper, for the touchdown. Desperately in need of a touchdown. They got it. Capping a 65-yard Quick strike in a minute and 17 seconds and six plays. Adam Griffith, an all-important point after is good. Wow, what a game. A minute 59 to go. Fourth down and two. Luke Fickle doesn't like what he sees. He wants to get a timeout called. He's trying to get a timeout called. They don't get it done. The ball snapped, and Blake Sims has his man single covered by Eli Apple. 
And that's a touchdown for Alabama. It looked like Luke Fickle was looking to Urban Meyer. Tempered. Everyone goes so slow for him. Didn't see that coming? They're going to spot it. Fourth and about two, it looks like. Yeah. And that's exactly what it'll be. And get this play in a little bit quicker if you're Alabama. You're two scores behind. At 2.15 and the clock running. Could be ball game here if they don't get this. Sims throws, caught by Cooper, touchdown. Ohio State was trying to call a timeout. Luke Fickle was trying to call a timeout from the sideline, and they couldn't get it done. The ball was snapped, and Blake Sims is able to find his main guy, Amari Cooper, for the touchdown. Desperately in need of a touchdown, they got it. Capping a 65-yard quick strike in a minute and 17 seconds and six plays Adam Griffith an all-important point after is good Wow what a game a minute 59 to go fourth down and two Luke Fickle doesn't like what he sees he wants to get a timeout called he's trying to get a timeout called they don't get it done the ball snap and Blake Sims has his man single covered by Eli Apple and that's a touchdown for Alabama. It looked like Luke Fickle was looking to Urban Meyer as if to say, yeah. should we use it here, should we use it here? And that is too late. And Cooper in the end zone again. Who's going to fill the bracket in two minutes? <laughs> We're having fun finding out, I'll tell you that much. Oregon is there. Win over Florida State in the Rose Bowl earlier today. So they're in the national championship presented by AT&T. Monday, January 12th, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. It'll either be Alabama or Ohio State, but we've still got 159 to figure that out. And barring overtime, who knows? Maybe we'll be here a while. And that big two-point conversion by Ohio State after their last touchdown. Yeah. Keeping this a seven-point lead. It was a six-point lead for quite a while. Alabama hasn't attempted an onside kick this year. It looks like they're going to try one here. Might be different if they had all three of their timeouts, but I guess they're going to take a shot at it here. Griffith gets the go-ahead. Here it comes. Took a high bounce. A second bounce. Tipped. And I think Evan Spencer caught it. Wow. And he went high to catch that one. That looked like the perfect onside kick. The high bounce, and Evan Spencer showed nerves of steel, gauging this and timing his jump and catching it at the high point. Wow. He outjumped our Darius Stewart, number 13, pulled it down, and so now two huge plays by number six in this ball game. An end around pass from his wide receiver position to Michael Thomas, and now that play. And the block on Ezekiel Elliott's exactly. long run. He's had a heck of a ball game. One fifty-seven to go. Ohio State by a touchdown. Cardell Jones takes the snap. He's actually going to throw. And he's going long. Knocked away. And it's Spencer, the intended receiver, and Cyrus Jones is with him stride for stride. Well, and no time used virtually on the clock. Now the seven seconds it took to run the play, but that's it. Double move, Cyrus Jones stride for stride with Evan Spencer, and a nice play on the ball. That pass surprised me a little bit. A little bit. I understand you want to try to end it, expecting Alabama to sell out. But if you're going to do that, why not do it to Devin Smith? He's your deep threat guy, not Spencer. And now Ohio State's got to use the timeout and no more time off the clock. Ohio State, the first of the half. 
Let's take a look at tonight's Capital One pivotal performance. You can't have a performance much better than this guy has put on for us tonight. This 54-yard run down the sideline, including that hurdle job. They didn't get a touchdown out of that, but they did get points. He scored in close. And then proving he is one of the best backs in the Big Ten, if not the country. Going to look up at the scoreboard to see if anybody's chasing him. Nobody's going to catch him. 85 yards for the touchdown. You know, the other thing, Brad, about why that call was curious on first down with two timeouts, now Alabama can stop the clock after second down and after third down. And Ohio State can't bleed the clock. This is going to be a run by Curtis Samuel. There's a timeout right away. And you see Trey DePriest call it immediately. There's Kirby Smart, defensive coordinator on the sideline, and he, of course, and Nick Saban work together so hard on that defense, and right now they need defense. Yeah, they need one more stop here, yep. and they've got the one timeout still in their pocket because of the incomplete pass on first down. So uh, they got to play solid and fundamental. They can't sell out and leave a big gap in the second level of their defense if Ohio State runs the football here. Get a stop. Get a timeout. If Cardell Jones makes one more big play, it might be the play that ends the football game and sends him to Arlington for the national championship. The Ohio State fans that are here praying that they can find a third down and nine. The Alabama fans thinking the opposite. And it's Jones going to run for it. And he's backpedaling, and that's about the last thing you want yeah. to happen. Well, and Nick Perry tried to strip the ball. Cardell Jones got a little too cute on that one. And when he reversed field, it's a good thing he was protecting the football because Nick Perry was coming for the strip. Leds, that's about a 10-yard difference, and that's going to make a big difference on what or where this punt lands. Yep. So the line of scrimmage now is the 39 when once they had it at the 49. Alabama will have no timeouts, but a decent amount of time. The question is now, do they go after this punt? They ran into him last time. Yep. Christian Jones is waiting back inside the 20-yard line. He's had moments in his Alabama career when he's come up and pulled off a big punt or kick return for a score. Setting up the return. And he has to call fair catch. So Alabama takes over around the 16-yard line, trailing by a touchdown and no timeouts. But Ohio State only ran 26 seconds off the clock on those three plays they had. So if you're Blake Sims with no timeout, the clock's always going to stop if you make a first down until they reset the chains. You can use your clock kill play or throw the ball to the sidelines. In the LSU game, when they trailed, there were only 50 seconds left, and they started on their own 35, and Blake Sims took them to the 10-yard line for a game-tying field goal. They need a touchdown in this one. There's the Bolitnikoff winner that you said three and a half hours ago. It helps. And the quarterback, if you got somebody like him. What Blake Sims cannot do here is take a sack. Throws complete to Howard, the tight end. That's his first catch, but they keep him inbounds. Clock will continue to move. Sims trying to get him lined up in a hurry. Valuable time ticking off that clock. I don't know why you didn't have two plays called there at the line of scrimmage. This time they go to Black, and he got leveled, and the ball and is out. And, oh, they called it complete? Clock ticking under a minute. Third down, that's irrelevant. Alabama's moving way too slowly here. Sure are. 
Sims slants it. DeAndrew White's got it. That'll stop the clock to move the chains momentarily, but they've only got it out to the 38-yard line. Now, you either got to move fast here or you got to kill the clock here and huddle up. But whatever it is, you got to do it with a sense of urgency. They're losing time here. Down to 33 seconds. Sims in trouble. Can't take the sack as Todd said. He's going to run for it. Got to get to the sideline. Well, at least got to midfield, and that will stop the clock to move the chains. I think the you need to clock it here. Up. I think you need to line up and spike the football and get in a huddle and call a play. Clock hasn't started yet. Now it has. At the midfield stripe, 20 seconds to play. Sims throws wide side. Howard's got it. He gets out of bounds. Just as good. 15 seconds remaining. Again, the difference between this and the LSU game. The LSU game, they just needed a field goal to tie and force overtime. To Please. force overtime here or have a chance to win, they got to get it all the way to the end zone. Amari Cooper comes out to the bottom of your screen. 15 seconds to play. No timeouts for Alabama. Trailing by a touchdown. Pressure coming. He's going to air it out long. Floats in the air and almost caught by DeAndre White, but broken up by Eli Apple. And now eight seconds is all we've got left. I'm not sure why you're not throwing this in the direction of Amari Cooper. I mean, if he's the best receiver in college football and I'm going to throw the ball up and give somebody a chance, I'm going to give number nine that chance. No disrespect to DeAndre White, but the guy who came into the game with 115 catches should get the ball targeted to him here. Maybe the last play. Sims. Deep. Hail Mary. Not answered. Intercepted. Ohio State's going to win it. The dream continues for the Buckeyes. The nightmare starts for number one Alabama. They are no more. Two old rivals, two of the best in the business. And the Buckeyes with the upset in New Orleans. And Alabama was left with a Hail Mary, it was all they had time to do. I didn't think they managed the clock very well early in this possession. And on the final play, Tyvis Powell comes down with the football. The 13th win of the season for Ohio State in dramatic fashion in what is an instant classic, Ohio State over Alabama. Let's check in with Holly. Well, Coach, you said the challenge of this game was, are you good enough? What did your team show you tonight to answer that question? We're good enough. And uh, a lot of respect for our opponent. That was, uh, that was a sledgehammer game, man. That was uh, a classic. So we'll, we are good enough. I saw you walking down the sideline, eight seconds left, and look up like, whew. What were you thinking with that ball in the air? Oh, I just want to make sure that we're giving our kids a chance to win and close the middle of the field because you got the best receiver in college football. We just want to make sure we get some hands on him. So, very jo a job well done. It's your third string quarterback. I don't want to minimize Cardell Jones, but how are you continuing to do this despite all the adversity? Our quarterback's uh, product goes around him. And uh, got some good players around him. Future's bright at Ohio State. Ezekiel Elliott, a night for the ages. What stood out to him? Well, it's... Uh, He's uh, probably the most underrated back in the country. And uh, against that defense, I'm not sure what he ran for, but it was a lot of yards. Career high. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Career high and a Sugar Bowl record for Ezekiel Elliott. Now we've got the trophy presentation as well as the Ford postgame coming up next. Thrilling win for Ohio State. Big day for the Big Ten as well.
Final score, Ohio State 42, Alabama 35. The Ford Post Game is brought to you by Ford. Introducing the all-new Ford F-150, the future of tough. What's next? Big things. Things you never saw coming. So buckle your tool belt. Here comes the all-new Ford F-150. The first and only pickup that lets you do this. And this. And this. All wrapped in a high-strength, military-grade aluminum alloy body so you can do the most of this. The all-new Ford F-150. The future of tough. Emily, check this out. Oh, my gosh. New specialty-grade coffee sustainably sourced by Thrive Farmers. Great taste is just part of the story. Panthers, Saturday at 420 on ESPN. This is the Ford Post Game Show. Welcome back to New Orleans. A celebration going on on the field for the underdog Ohio State Buckeyes. The Big Ten champions are going to play for the overall championship as they're going to meet Oregon now in Arlington, Texas on ESPN. January 12th and they'll go in I don't know if they'll be an underdog <laughs> against uh, Oregon or not but man what a performance they yeah. put on tonight well and, and remember early in this game it was 21 to 6 Ohio State had had goal to go situations couldn't get it in the end zone had to settle for field goals game could have really gotten away from them at yeah. that point they maintained their poise the next time they were down there they got the score and from that point on they played as the more confident team I thought the rest of the ball game I'm pretty sure I know who's going to be the most outstanding player in the football game but Urban talked about it with uh, with Holly down there we talked about all the great backs the Big Ten has yeah. had this year led by Melvin Gordon who of course was second in the Heisman voting but Ezekiel Elliott yeah. proved he belonged today man absolutely and he has got outstanding speed to go along with his ability to break tackles first five games 88 yards per game down the stretch. He was a workhorse over 200 yards the last two ball games for the Buckeyes Cardell Jones You can't say enough about the guy it makes yeah. his second start It's in a pressure pack situation yeah. in front of a packed house that basically was about two-thirds Alabama fans And he handled it pretty well, and you know, he never looked out of whack He never looked like it phased him You know, I don't know if it just was what you don't know doesn't hurt you in a situation <laughs> like this But he looked calm he looked collected even after the interception he kept his poise and he made some big throws and made big plays on third down uh, throughout the night. He had 153 of that 243 throwing the football on third down. And so a sensational two week, uh, two outings, two starts for him. First, the win over Wisconsin, and now leading his team to a victory to get them in position for the national championship presented by AT&T. Ohio State, a lot of people wondered, did they belong? Should it be TCU or Baylor or Ohio State? Well, they kind of put that to rest by what they did in the Big Ten championship game. And now 12 gauge and company, a nickname for Cardell Jones, proves once again that they I don't think Alabama's overrated, no. but I think maybe Ohio State's underrated. I'm not sure if that's the case or not. But certainly tonight, Urban Meyer again proven that uh, he's one of the best around. And absolutely, he's got a shot now to play for a, a third national championship after having two at Florida. And I think the thing about it is they are a team that has gotten so much better as the season has gone on. And that's what you have to have to, to get into a playoff and make a run and win a championship. We saw them against Virginia Tech. They yeah. were not a good football team at that point. We saw them against Penn State. They had to go to two overtimes in State College to beat Penn State. They still weren't quite there at that point. But from that point on, they were as good as anybody in college football. Well, there's the man of the hour. Not just the coach, but the running back. Everybody's getting their new caps and T-shirts. 
All state Sugar Bowl champs on it and maybe an opportunity to finally get another national championship back to Columbus as we get out of John Saunders. All right, thanks a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, time for our trophy presentation. We're going to get some of the players up here on the podium. As we congratulate first the Alabama Crimson Tide and Coach Nick Saban on a tremendous season. But it's time to celebrate the All-State Sugar Bowl champs, the Ohio State Buckeyes. And I'm going to welcome Judge Dennis Waldron, who's our Sugar Bowl president. Judge? Thank you. Coach, on behalf of the All-State Sugar Bowl Committee, it is my honor and pleasure to present our trophy to you, to your outstanding Buckeye football team, the Ohio State University, and all of your fans across the nation. Congratulations on this great victory and a trip to the first ever college football playoff championship game. Congratulations as well to Coach Nick Saban, the Alabama Crimson Tide, their university and fans for a most courageous effort here tonight. Thank you. Okay, we'll let you celebrate a little bit more in a moment, but I want to bring in Tom Wilson, the chairman, president, CEO of Allstate to make the presentation. Coach Meyer, your team brought grit and, and talent onto the field, found a way to win. You know, and that's the magic of college football that not only makes us love this sport, but reminds us what a great country it is. Thank you for sharing it with us. And to you personally, I've had the opportunity to do this before. I am so pleased to see you bring your talents to yet another storied program. So as you go forward next week, remember, it's national championship time. Congratulations. Go Bucks. I'm not sure. If you want to try picking up the trophy, it's pretty heavy. <laughs> you need a few players to help. All right, let me get, get in here, guys, and try and talk, talk to Coach Meyer. Coach, it was a fantastic season for you guys, and we'll talk a little bit about the route here, but first of all, very few people thought you could, could do this, especially with Cardell, your third quarterback of the year. Talk about the resiliency of your team, especially falling down and turning the ball over early. Uh, thank you. On behalf of the Ohio State Buckeyes, I want to thank the Sugar Bowl. Also thank uh, and show a lot of respect for our opponent, the Alabama Crimson Tide. But most importantly, I want to thank Buckeye Nation for being here tonight. Thank you very much. It says a lot about you as a head coach. It says a lot about your players that you're able to lose Braxton, then able to lose JT, and still able to make it here and win this game. So what is it about you as a head coach and the resiliency of your players that are able to do something like this? This is uh, one of the closest, this, is, this could be the closest group of players I've ever been around. And the one thing from the start of our program, there's no such thing as an excuse. One guy goes down, someone's got to go. And every time afterwards a game, we grab a hand, and we're just very grateful for the blessings to be able to play this great game where we played at The Ohio State University, and most importantly, playing for each other. That's how we did it. What, imp what impresses you most about what your team has been able to do. It's the resilience when things don't go right. And uh, we, we started that game, we didn't play very well. We put our defense in bad position. I want to say three times, not one time did the defense say anything other than we're going to stop them. And so the offense, defense, kicking game worked together and they worked together all year. In every previous season, winning this game or a game like it in the BCS would mean that you're walking off with the championship. But this year, it's a playoff. You have to win one more game to have that championship. So 
Does that change anything about how you feel standing up here and how do you prepare for Oregon? No, I take these guys anywhere. If we gotta go play 10 more, we'll go play 10 more. That's how much respect I have for my players. And real quickly, what's your first thoughts on the matchup with Oregon, especially after seeing what they were able to do to Florida State tonight? Well, we know the Oregon program very well. We uh, share many thoughts. Coach, Elf Coach Elfrich is a friend, and uh, I think they're two great programs, and we're going to do the best we can to represent the Big Ten and the great state of Ohio and the Ohio State University. All right, Coach, congratulations. You made a good decision to leave ESPN, I think. <laughs> That worked out pretty well. All right, we're time now for the most outstanding players of the game, offense and defense. I want to bring up Jack Laborde, Jack, chairman of the All-State Sugar Bowl Executive Committee. First of all, the most outstanding offensive player. I wanted to wait for that cue. <laughs> Tekel Elliott, who of course, had an All-State Sugar Bowl record, 230 yards on just 20 carries. Incredible. Zeke, were you surprised at your ability? You had over 100 yards in the first quarter alone. Were you surprised at how easily you were able to run on Alabama's defense? Uh, we have momentum as an offense, and uh, our line's just been getting better and better every week, and uh, I really have faith in my boys, and I knew that they were going out there and paved the way for me. It's clear you guys have a lot of faith in each other, and again, with Cardale coming in and starting just his second game of the season, did you know that you had to have extra pressure on you, especially because you did the same thing against Wisconsin as well? Oh, uh, you know, this every game I want to come out and do whatever I can to get that W. All right, Zeke. Congratulations. We'll see you in Dallas. The defensive player of the game, Darren Lee. Darren, this defense stepped up at some incredible, incredible times. Uh, the offense put you in a little bit of a hole with a couple of turnovers early. You guys took it on your shoulders after that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we just believed in each other. Just had to weather the storm and just keep playing fundamentally sound football. So, you know, we know if we kept doing that, we'll come out on top. Are you looking forward to going up against the Heisman Trophy winner and Marcus Mariota? Oh, man, it's an honor to get to play, play against him, but, you know, we'll be ready. All right, congratulations. Congratulations to the Ohio State Buckeyes, All-State Sugar Bowl champs. We'll see you all in Dallas. Brad, back to you. All right, John, thank you. Celebration continues for the Buckeyes. Someday I think they'll call that the streak by Zeke that won the football game, an 85-yard touchdown romp. And it's a 42-35 win for Ohio State. Todd and I have some final comments and wrap it up when we come back. The Ford Post Game is brought to you by Ford. Introducing the all-new Ford F-150, the future of tough. Move it. The big, the massive, the what the heck is that? Introducing the all-new Ford F-150. Its high-strength military-grade aluminum alloy body makes it up to 700 pounds lighter. And with less of its own lard to move around, it can move more of yours. 12,200 pounds. The most towing of any half-ton pickup. The all-new Ford F-150. The future of tough. Behind every victory is someone who helped make it happen. Call them mentors, coaches, or even mom or dad. At Northwestern Mutual, we call them advisors. The right financial partners to help you tap into strengths you might not even know you have and guide you where you want to be financially and personally. Because no one wins alone. You and Northwestern Mutual, stronger together. When the confetti settles, who's in the history books? The National Championship, Monday, January 12th on ESPN. Welcome back to the Ford Post Game Show. Welcome to 2015. 
we celebrate a new year and a new era. The semifinals are complete. One of the largest stages on Earth is set. The college football playoff national championship presented by AT&T. Monday, January 12th on ESPN. So that's the matchup. Brutus will be there in Arlington as Ohio State with an upset at Alabama. They came in with Ohio State probably being the underdog by nine or ten points, yeah. and uh, they win it by seven. Brad Nessler and Todd Blackledge back here in New Orleans with you. We saw Oregon twice this year in person. We saw them play a lot of other ball on film and uh, what they did today. This is the third time we've seen Ohio State. As you mentioned earlier, we saw them against Virginia Tech, and that wasn't good. Their offensive line got better. Their yeah. quarterback got better. Then they went to their third quarterback, and here they are playing for the national championship. I think it's an amazing story, and it's what's made this season so much fun. Yeah, absolutely, and, and in the game tonight, uh, they dominated the football game. They were down early. They came storming back. They won in every major phase. They won total yardage. They won rushing. They won third down. They won turnovers. Right. All the games within the game, Ohio State was the better team tonight and, and goes into the championship game now with a lot of momentum against Oregon. I thought Oregon would have some trouble without their all Pac-12 and one of the top defensive backs in the country being injured and not being in that ball game. Didn't seem to hurt them today, but the turnovers killed Florida State. Yeah. So let's look ahead. We think we've seen these guys enough what do you think's coming up on the 12th well I, I tell you I think it's gonna be a great matchup I think Ohio State matches up fine with Oregon I think they've got a good defensive line that can create some problems they've got speed to match Oregon Marcus Mariota you got to say they have the advantage at quarterback although Cardell Jones two starts he's played beautifully but Marcus Mariota is the best player in college football this year and he had another big game today I think the key will be how does Oregon's defense play because I thought they played very well in what I saw of the game today against Florida State not only did they create turnovers they did a nice job of just slowing Florida State down and and keeping them out of the end zone early in that ball game so Oregon's defense how they match up against Ohio State a big key it was a pretty nice day for the Big Ten Wisconsin yeah. came from behind That's the fourth right. quarter and won Michigan State I thought that one was over they came back and beat Baylor and now here's the Big Ten that kind of got beat up on again this year you know yeah. how good were they good enough to uh, beat the number one team yeah. in the country today and, and Ohio State the thing you got to say about him and when you talk to Urban Meyer and I don't think he's just blowing smoke when he says this he said he thinks his team's a year away from being right. really good well they're a week away from playing for a national championship and they deserve to be there they deserve to be in the final four they won tonight in convincing fashion against Alabama and they've got a shot to play for it all on January 12th well, I know you and Holly still have to work the ESPN uh, radio booth for the yeah. national championship game with Mike Tirico you and our season's over awesome. couldn't have come to a better stop bro yeah it was awesome great year 42 35 that's the final more from New Orleans coming up on Sports Center for Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowan, our ESPN crew, Brad Nessler saying Ohio State going to the national championship. Welcome everyone to the Ford post game, and the set is packed <laughs> with Buckeyes from Ohio State on a history-making day and night in all of college football. It will be Ohio State and Oregon playing for the national championship on January the 12th in Arlington, Texas. So we say hello. There's the offensive MVP, Ezekiel Elliott. There's the defensive MVP, Darren Lee. And of course, here's the head coach, Urban Meyer. And Urban, we'll, we'll start with you. Off to a very difficult start, deep inside uh, territory, inside the 10-yard line, had to settle for field goals. Tell me about the ebbs and flow of this game until you finally pull out the victory. defensive bad field position we didn't score in the red zone and then we could get out of the hole in that darn fourth quarter we kept trying we were taking shots and anytime you face a very good defense you got you got some issues but uh, we'll take it and uh, the most resilient group of people I've ever been around coach you own third down on both sides of the ball uh, any sense coming in you'd have such success on both sides of the ball on third down well they're actually very good on third down but that's something that uh, we work at very hard at that's the money down and uh, anytime you face a guy like Amari Cooper I mean we knew where number nine is number nine left the field I heard over the headsets number nine is off the field so we knew exactly we think he's the best receiver in college football so uh, uh, our staff did a great job but most importantly uh, these, these players man they, they just do they do the unthinkable 
And the unthinkable, how about this? Ezekiel over 200 yards again, two consecutive games, the Big Ten Championship game. In this game, how pleased and proud of you, not only the job that you did, but with your offensive line. Tell us what this means. Tell us what this means to be standing here on this stage on your way to Dallas when nobody thought you guys could do it. We believed in each other and we believed in ourselves and that's all we really need in the end. And that's all we really, that's all we needed. We didn't hear any other doubt outside of everything. And you know, it was great to come out on top and get a great team win. Hey, Urban, in your third year, Coach Meyer, are you ahead of your plan? Because this is your third year at Ohio State. Obviously, it's a process. But for you to be in the third year, the first year of the playoffs going to the championship game, is this as your plan, as, as you decided it was going to be, or you hoped it was going to be, or are you ahead of the curve? No, I thought uh, in the beginning of the year, I, when we lost all those players last year, there, anytime you go through a coaching transition, there's a void somewhere. And I thought this was going to be the void year, but you got sophomores like these two guys and Joey Butler. I mean, that sophomore class now, uh, I think it was pretty good when we signed them. They're outstanding, and uh, they got better and better as you went along. Was this a, your biggest challenge as a coach? Because you used three quarterbacks this season. You're down to your third quarterback. Well, I can uh, have had a long career, so we've had a lot of challenges. <laughs> this has been this has been a lot of fun because uh, there's no uh, there's no resistance whatsoever. They just go and they practice. They embrace the grind, and as a result, they're going to be rewarded for the grind that they've gone through. Coach, in Orlando at the award show, you came on stage, I had a chance to ask you, was this your best coaching job? You didn't want to say yes then. What an accomplishment are you willing to now say that this may be your best coaching job ever? I'll, tell, I'll say this. I think it's one of our best recruiting jobs. Look at the guy <laughs> next to you. Look at that guy. And uh, once again, uh, there, there's the future is really bright, man. And uh, there's a bunch of good young players coming back, and, and I can't wait to get back in the locker room with that team right now. Th this one challenged me to a race. What do you What do you think in a foot don't race? Go there. <laughs> don't go there. Hey, I love you to death. I don't know if I'm sure on that one. Uh, you talked about the future. Let's talk about the immediate future. Give me an early thought on Oregon in the national championship game. Already installed as an underdog, you were an underdog here tonight. That doesn't seem to phase you guys at all. No, I I, I love Oregon. Uh, I'm very good friends with the owner of Nike, so I'm going to give him a hard time. And I think their quarterback's outstanding. I'm, I just love good people. And it, it's a program that does it the right way. Got a lot of respect for them. Did you expect Cardell to have that many carries to run the ball that much coming in? Was that no. the plan? No, 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 no. That was, uh, uh, they started uh, really, you know, we, we got to hit those shots. Even at the end of the game, they played bare zero and a great team. Uh, we, we have to go work on that. But uh, no, that's, that's not, he's not that kind of player. Yeah, that's not uh, Why did you make that decision to throw the ball long, not run the ball, make them burn their no time no, off? There's no, no they were playing, there's no, you can run all you want. Uh, they had 10 guys at the line of scrimmage, and so I, uh, that was my call. But and burning the two timeouts, you didn't feel that was more important than that, or you felt like you yeah. had that good enough shot? Hindsight, you know, yeah. you know, be critical, I guess, but uh, we hit that thing, and that's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ezekiel, I'm just curious about the, your young quarterback there and the inexperienced quarterback. You had the big running game. How was he in the huddle early on and then as the game progressed? Talking about Cardell. Uh, one last question for you. Did you ever find your headset? Tell us about that. You, you had a good headset toss after the, uh, after no, the, the, the no roughing the punter. The five-yard penalty on the punter. On the, that's back when I was 36 years old. <laughs> that kind of stuff. But I, I thought they roughed the punter, but we're good. We're good, and uh, that's, that's not the sideline composure then. Fair enough. Thanks, man. We'll see you in Arlington. Congratulations. Urban that's Meyer. Congratulations. Ezekiel Elliott. That's know, Darren Lee. Congratulations. The man. Ohio State Buckeyes. Congratulations. They're the Congratulations. four seed in this first time ever college football playoff, and the four seed will play in the national championship game. Cardell Jones is with Marty Smith. Thanks. Matt Cardale Jones, describe this moment for me. It's unbelievable, man. I mean, words can't describe this moment, you know. We took down the big bag SEC. And, uh, you know, we, we just ready to go. We were ready to take it all, man. It looked to me like watching the game, you really settled down when Ezekiel Elliott scored that rushing touchdown. What did that do for your confidence the rest of the way? I mean, it, it did a lot, not just for my confidence, but for my teammates. I mean, Zeke, you know, he, he told us he was going to make a big play. Our old line was blocking them guys up front. Something that we really didn't think we would have too much success for. So, you know, I mean, it did a lot for our confidence, a lot for me to settle down. When you won the Big Ten Championship, you said the Buckeyes shocked the world. What did you do tonight? 
it just keep, it just keep getting better. You know, we keep shocking the world because once again we was underdogs and uh, once again we weren't supposed to be here. So you know, we did it and uh, we're ready for the next game. Thoughts on facing Oregon for the national championship? Great team and let's let's see how it happens. You know, get into the film room. Congratulations. Thank you. You see uh, Urban Meyer in the getaway van there. No pizza yet this year. <laughs> Hold on the pizza. Uh, significant, I think, the T-shirts, because we saw like, the kids from Oregon also after their victory earlier today wearing the same T-shirts that said, one, not done. I mean, you know, this had a sort of national championship feel to it. They'll be fired up one more time, and it's another week of experience, another week of confidence for Cardell Jones now. It is, and for him in his second start to win another big game like this. His first start was the Big Ten Championship game. They won that game. Then to go to the playoff and win this game, Basically, it's historic, obviously, but the way that he played. Not only throwing the football, but his composure. When he had to take off and run with the football under extreme pressure and duress, he found ways to move the chains, and I thought that was impressive in the offense. The quarterback conversation is completely over. It is done yeah. with. We had it when Braxton Miller went down. We didn't know what JT Barrett would do. He goes down before the Big Ten Championship game. Cardell Jones goes out, wins that game, and we had the conversation again. Could he step on this stage? Would this stage be too big for him? He proved it wasn't. The quarterback conversation for Ohio State is officially finished. The next conversa conversation will be in the spring. How fun is it going to be to have those three guys yeah. back? I wouldn't want to make that decision, but it is a great decision to have to make. Well, let's not put the cart before the horse. Let's get to the championship game first. How about Tom Herman and the job he's done, the quarterback coach for Ohio State? Not one, not two, but three quarterbacks and developing these quarterbacks, not only developing them, but getting them ready to play at such a high level and such with efficiency at the top of their game, not making mistakes, progressing. You look at the growth that each one of these quarterbacks has made every time they stepped on the field the last few years, it's amazing. What was Jones more impressive to you guys with his legs running, especially on third down, especially early in the in that first half, or with his arm passing? Decision making. It was the decision making, not just the passing, not just the running. You need a quarterback to come in and make the right decision. He threw a lot of balls away tonight, and a lot of times people don't understand that's the best play to make is to get rid of the ball. He came into this game and he made decisions to help his team win, not turning the ball over, had one, but still made the decision when he, when the quarterback takes off run. And a lot of times, all you need to do is move the chains. And you've seen the big fella went up in the crowd, not shy at all. Big games are won on third down. And the Buckeyes were 10 of 18. That's how you win championships. And they own third down tonight. They definitely did. And if, if you look at the defense for Alabama, this is probably the worst tackling job I've seen from an Alabama defense. If you looked at the yards after contact by Ohio State, not only the receivers, but Ezekiel Elliott. When you look at Cardell Jones, they did a poor job of tackling. But hats off to Ohio State because they didn't give up on the first guy that came up and met them on the tackle. They just ran through that tackle and continued to pick up extra yards. And a lot of times people talk about the tackling of the defense. But a lot of times, it's that offensive guy. He's not that sure. easy to bring down. Ezekiel Elliott is a monster. Yeah. And he showed that tonight. It was through tackles. It was around people. Showed the speed after he got through. And we always look back and say, boy, that was bad tackling. But sometimes, those guys are just flat out hard to mm -hmm. tackle. 230 rushing yards for Ezekiel Elliott. Most rushing yards in Sugar Bowl history. Of course, this is only one half of the equation on a historical day in college football. The other half of the story is what took place out west. Ohio State will take on Oregon because of what took place in Pasadena. And that's where we find, of course, Chris Fowler and Kirk Herbstreit. Fellas. Guys, thank you. Sounds like some revelry there in New Orleans just getting started. Pretty quiet here in Pasadena. The Ducks are probably home by now. Kirk, a lot can happen in eight hours over two semifinals. You can have a long streak snapped. You can have a potential dynasty derailed at Alabama. You can have new stars emerge. And we had one upset in the two games that Ohio State punches their ticket. Uh, in, in surprising fashion to many people. How many teams out there, if you're a fan of another team, could win with a backup quarterback to get to a national championship game? How many, could, do, how many of you guys know who your third string quarterback is? I want you to just absorb that for a second. That's what Ohio State just accomplished. They beat Alabama, with, not, with, not with Braxton Miller, not with JT Barrett, but with Cardale Jones. A third string quarterback who was very effective tonight, had a great uh, compliment there in Ezekiel Elliott. But that's amazing to think of the job that Urban Meyer and Tom Herman did to get their team ready to play. And Cardell Jones, it's not as if he's a third string quarterback, a walk on quarterback. This kid's very talented coming out of high school, but still, 
He was third on the depth chart when this season started. It's just, I, I don't know if I've ever seen anything like that for a team to get to a national championship when they're getting it done with, with a third string guy. And, but the guy, again, the way he plays, the decisions he made against that defense on that stage, that, that's very rare to see. Ohio State defense gives up 35, but they have been underrated. They shut down one Heisman finalist, Melvin Gordon. They shut down another Heisman finalist, Amari Cooper, in this game. They contribute a pick six. I mean, yeah, you know, they gave up some points, but again, they stood out when they had to. Oh, who hasn't given up some points to Blake Sims and Amari Cooper in, in this Alabama offense? So I, I, I'm not surprised by that at all. I think the fact that they came up with two crucial turnovers, you think about the pick six, Remember when the punt from Ohio State that was deep in their own territory that jumped back and Alabama had the ball at about the plus 25? Right away, it looks like they're going to attack, go downfield and try to score to try to take the lead. Ohio State comes up with an interception deep in their own territory. It was just, it, this team just had a belief. Uh, Urban Meyer deserves more credit than he probably realizes for the job that he did to get his team psychologically prepared to think that they can win this game against Alabama. This is what Alabama, this is what Urban Meyer really, when he first took the job and he walked down that hallway and said, I'm the head coach at Ohio State. This was the bar in his mind, Alabama, Nick Saban. This is why he recruits the way he does. This is why he builds his program the way he does, to try to compete not just with Michigan and Michigan State and Penn State, but for Alabama. He knew it going in. What an accomplishment for Urban. And now he's on his way back to a national championship game. Yeah, it was Saban and Alabama that beat Meyer when he was with the Gators. That loss that, that sent him into exhaustion and collapse in his driveway and eventually led yeah. to his brief retirement. So some revenge of sorts in this game. Yeah, this is why you hire Urban Meyer to win championships. And you saw his reaction after beating Bama in the Superdome restrained. He was smiling. He was satisfied with the performance that night, but he knows the bigger game lies ahead for him. I, I cannot wait to see this Ohio State team that just has a belief within themselves against Marcus Mariota and an Oregon team that right now is hitting on all cylinders. Let's face it. Florida State came into their game today uh, very confident that their defense could match up with Mariota, but Mariota is a quiet assassin with how he leads his team, the decisions that he makes, uh, the way he executes the up-tempo. Ohio State has 11 days to get ready. you got to put Nick Saban and Alabama behind them, and they've got to get ready for probably the fastest offense that executes in a way where they don't make very many mental mistakes. Ohio State's going to have their biggest challenge of the year in the national title against Oregon and Mariota. Had to spend a lot of fuel to get Pie the Crimson Tide, obviously. Ducks seem to win this game at about third gear. So, yeah. Bucks and Ducks in 11 days in Arlington. Ohio State 8 0 all time against Oregon, but again, will be underdogs in this game. Let's now hear from Nick Saban back on the podium in New Orleans reacting to his team's loss. Well, you know, we're very disappointed in um, the outcome of the game, but. Uh, you have to congratulate Ohio State, who played a, a, a really, really good game, and uh, we probably didn't play our best game, and uh, I take responsibility for that. I think everybody in the organization, from the coaches, you know, right on down, um, has to take responsibility for what they did or didn't do to help prepare the team to be able to play their best game, which is, was certainly our goal coming into this game. Um, I think, you know, specifically in the game, third down was probably uh, they hurt us on third down, lots of times on third and longs, and converted. Uh, and we didn't do very well on third down, so we didn't continue drives, and they were able to continue driving and, and convert scores, you know, especially when we were ahead 21 to 6, and uh, they scored 28 un unanswered points. But, you know, I'm very proud of this team. You know, this team excelled all year long. Uh, kept Alabama in the forefront of college football everywhere in the country you know, based on the hard work and the improvement that they made, you know, throughout the season. So I'm very proud of what they accomplished and winning the SEC, uh, as well as winning 12 football games in a very, you know, tough conference. We're very disappointed in the outcome today. It was our goal to um, play our best in this game so we would have an opportunity to play in a national championship game. Um, but we, we, we obviously didn't do the things that we needed to do as well as we needed to do them to have a chance to do that. But uh, I think there's a lot of winners on this team, uh, and I don't think you necessarily have to get a trophy uh, to be a winner. And I do think that there's a lot of guys, um, you know, on this team, 
two of them sitting right up here with me right now and many, many more in that locker room that uh, have been winners all year and did a fantastic job for our team. At this time, we'll take questions from the media. We do have two floor mics out if you'll raise your hand. Get my attention. It'll give us just a second to get a mic over to you. Questions for Alabama. We'll start here front row on our right. Co Coach, if uh, you could talk about uh, the differences that you saw when you were up 21 to 6 and it, what they did to grab that momentum ultimately going on 28 nothing run. Well, well, really, you know, we were up 21 to 6 because of two turnovers and two stops in the red area uh, that they so we really weren't stopping them. Uh, we kind of had the momentum of the game uh, because of the turnovers that we got uh, and converted those into scores. Uh, but we weren't really playing and executing the way we needed to even then. I didn't like the feel of the game uh, even then. Uh, so we just stopped them in the red zone and we got two turnovers and that was the difference. And, um, and in the second half, I thought we played a little better uh, and did a little better job. Uh, but we did not control the football game like we usually do. And um, it wasn't anything that they did differently. Uh, they had a good plan. They executed it well against us. And, um, you know, we gave up far too many big plays in the game, which has been a problem for us toward the end of the year. Um, and that was, uh, that, that was, you know, when you give up big plays and you don't get off the field on third down, you got lots of problems. Other questions? Please raise your hand. Welcome back in, John Butchergrass, Steve Levy, and uh, some interesting notes here. Ohio State first win over Alabama in program history. Seven point underdogs they are to Oregon. Uh, but again, I'm really surprised, and we talked about, we thought that Ohio State would have a hard time running between the tackles, mm -hmm. and they really didn't. They did not. Their offensive line was spectacular in this game, particularly getting to the second level. When you can average almost seven yards per carry in 42 attempts against an Alabama defense that was the number one defense, the run defense, coming into this game, that's very impressive. Uh, Nick Saban, you, you heard it at the end there. He said the exact same thing at halftime to Holly Rowe about third downs. We can't get off the field on third down, and with Cardell Jones just abusing them on third down, especially with the run, th that has to be the key to this football game. Absolutely. There are two things that coaches talk about at the end of football games when it comes to winning and losing. It's third downs and it's turnovers. And when you can't get off the field on third downs, it allows the offense to gain confidence. And when they get confidence, you got a young quarterback in a second start, and you gain confidence and you find ways to move the football, then all of a sudden, you come out in that second half, you get points on the board, you start to make plays, but it starts with staying on the field. Moving the chains is the biggest key for an offense to get rolling. And, and Saban, who, you know, who was a mastermind, so he says that at halftime, what he said, and then they still can't adjust and figure it out in the second half as well. And he just was by Ohio State. They're not going to do the same thing. They're going to continue to evolve throughout the game. And I thought Tom Herman and Urban Meyer did a terrific job of making sure getting to the edge with Elliott and then pounding between the tackles. They mixed it up a lot in the run game. And that was a problem because on third down, it made it a man manageable position for Cardell Jones. And even if it was third and long, he found a way to make a big play on third down. And so we have our national championship game in Dallas a week from Monday. Oregon and Ohio State. Much more coverage coming here from New Orleans. The forecast is for a storm of confetti. The Ohio State Buckeyes will return to Columbus winning the Sugar Bowl. The Ford Post Game is brought to you by your next truck, Ford F-150. On January 23rd, when crime hits hard. What do you plan to do about it? I'm off. Mordecai hits harder. Don't cause a panic. You should see the other fellow. Johnny Depp is Mordecai. Starts January 23rd. I, Larry Culpepper, I'm going to throw the greatest college football party ever. I should have made a list. Attention, Walmart shoppers. Larry Culpepper's having a party. Hey, which one of these is best for watching the college football playoff? Oh, all of them. I'll take all of them. You think salsa or guacamole goes better with college football? Uh, that's a great price. Hey, man, can you help me get this out to my car? We're going to take all this out to my car. Let's go, Dr. Pepper here. And Walmart. College football playoff party. 
The Under Armour High School All-America Game is a star-studded event. Past stars include A.J. Green in 2008 and Julio Jones that same year. In 2009, Manti Teo and wide receiver Alshon Jeffrey. In 2011, Jadavion Clowney and 2012, Jameis Winston. Future stars will shine in the 2015 Under Armour High School All-America Game. Tomorrow at 4 on ESPN2. Gamefly is hands down the best way to rent and buy games. Rent as many games as you want. There is no catch. Go to Gamefly.com right now and start your free 30-day trial today. Now offering movie rentals. Products shown ready to through N. It is happening. With or without you. Critics agree, the Americans has it all. She's ready to find out who we really are. We are so close. I've got him. Excuse me, ma'am. The Washington Post raves, the best show on television is The Americans, premieres Wednesday, January 28th, only on FX. Any idea what you're gonna do with the rest of your FSA friends? No idea. You? Not a clue. Use your FSA funds to purchase any of our top brand frames and get free lenses at glasses.com. Insurance was born online. They have smart online tools, which saves money. They settle claims quickly, which saves money. They drive an all hybrid claims fleet, which saves money. They were born online and built to save money, which means when they save, you save. Click or call. Sports Center, brought to you by the Lincoln Motor Company, and the first ever MKC. Nick Saban at number one Alabama, taking on Urban Meyer at number four Ohio State in the Sugar Bowl. Winner advances to the college football championship game. They'll meet Oregon. First quarter, Alabama down 3 nothing. Derrick Henry going to rush to the left, get some great blocking from the entire offensive line. Look at all the crimson uniforms there allowed in the burst untouched for 25 yards. Yeah, and you can't let the big fella get rolling. The blocking off that edge early in the first half, I thought it was going to mean trouble for Ohio State. So Alabama 7-3 lead at 7-6. Here's Blake Sims rolling out, finding Amari Cooper, 15-yard touchdown. The best wide receiver in football. You can't let him get open like this because if you do, he's going to find a way to get open. What a great move by Amari Cooper, finding a way to make sure that he gets away from the defender, and it's an easy pitch and catch for Blake Sims. That put Alabama up 14-6, and you, you thought... The tide was rolling at this point, right? Second quarter, here are the Buckeyes driving. And again, those thoughts of Alabama maybe on their way to a big time victory. Thought that again when Cardell Jones was intercepted by Cyrus Jones, returned 32 yards. Yeah, and the, the DBs, the corners for Alabama only had three interceptions on the season between Jones and Jackson. Did a big one right here, and it did look like Alabama was on their way to putting this away. TJ Yeldon rushing up the middle. Nick Saban 78 and 2 at Alabama when leading by at least 14 points. This game is over. Right, wrong. Final 19 seconds of the first half. Buckeyes trick play. It's the receiver. Evan Spencer throwing a Michael Thomas touchdown. What a fabulous catch and balance by Michael Thomas. But what a great play call by Urban Meyer. Going into the bag of tricks in this situation. Awesome execution by the offense. Here, here's a trick oration. Here's the throw right on the money. You can't ask for more than this. And he just barely gets his foot in. Wow. It's a touchdown for the Buckeyes. Look at this. Just by centimeters. Mm. Twist that toe. And he had to feel it because he couldn't look down and no, see it. Really. <laughs> Simply amazing. Opening drive of the third quarter. Buckeyes strike again. Jones looking deep downfield for Eddie Jackson. Falls down in coverage, allows Devin Smith to score. Devin Smith has scored touchdowns all season long. Came in with 30 catches for almost 800 yards. He's been the big play wow. receiver for Ohio State all season long. You saw the tweet from LeBron, O-H. LeBron's got some spare time now. <laughs> Here's Sims dropping back. Picked off by the big fella. It's Steve Miller, who dropped back in coverage, runs it back 41 yards for the touchdown. And a terrific job by Miller of keeping an eye on Blake Sims and reading his eyes. So a poor decision by quarterback Blake Sims right here. He's going to have a chance because he's going to get time to step up in the pocket, but it's just an ill-advised pass. 
So Alabama gives up 28 unanswered points for the first time since September of 2007. How about that? Late third quarter. Bama's trying to make their own comeback. Sims will keep it here and burst up the middle. Five-yard touchdown. It's 34-28. Fourth quarter. Buckeyes punting from their own end zone. Cameron Johnston's punt is going to take a bad bounce. When I say a bad bounce, I mean a bad bounce. Awful. Awful. How about Bama taking over the plus 23? Next play from scrimmage. Here's the chance, right? This is probably the ball game. Sims rolls out, mm. intercepted by Von Bell. Can't take advantage of the great field position. Absolutely huge. Not quite sure about the play call in that situation. You get the ball back. You've been running the ball. Why take a chance and get cute? I like the play call. It was a poor pass. Yeah. If he puts air under this pass, it's six. Mm -hmm. So Alabama wastes that great field position. Then Ezekiel Elliott rushes to the left. How about 85 to the hizzy? Joey, I didn't know the big fella was that fast. I told you speed is speed. I told you last <laughs> night. When the big fella gets out, there's nothing they can do about it. Speed kills. Mm -hmm. Longest play Alabama's given up all season. Here's another look at it. And this is a Joey Galloway type block. Look I at this. The same, oh. I was thinking the same thing, to be honest with you. When I saw it, I said, boy, that, that reminds me of me going in there blocking. Elliott, 20 carries, 230 yards. How's my average? Ohio State gets the two-point conversion. They go up. 42-28. Sims to Cooper. Hey, an Amari Cooper sighting. Alabama's down 42-35. So late. Still a one-score game. Still time on the clock. Amazing, actually, how much time they had to play with towards the end. Eight seconds left now. Sims firing the Hail Mary. Not this time. Tyvis Powell picks it off to end the ball game. And Ohio State wins. They advance on in the first ever college football playoff They'll play in the national championship game. They'll face Oregon. You want to know the Buckeyes would be 8 and 0 all time against Oregon to this point. For Ohio State, it's their first official bowl win against an SEC opponent. That topic might come up again, the SEC. They had to vacate the 2011 Sugar Bowl win against Arkansas. And Urban Meyer, now 2 and 2 all time against Nick Saban. Coach Meyer joined us moments ago. Uh, one of the great team, well, this is one of the great team wins we've ever been a part of because we didn't play we didn't play well at times. We found a way to win. We'll now take questions for Ohio State. If you'll raise your hand and give us just a few seconds to get a mic to you. Let's start on the front row, left side. Urban Todd Porter from the Canton Repository. Just sort of describe for us your feelings uh, when you came down with the the interception at the end of the game. Just I mean, they were driving the ball, but you guys came down with it and secured the win. Well, we just it's you know we just. Uh, it, you uh, start questioning why we threw that ball. That was my call to throw it down the field. And, uh, you're, you know, you're going to not gain a yard anyways against very good players. They're playing zero coverage. Everyone's within two yards of the line of scrimmage, and it was my call. And so uh, maybe it wasn't the right call. And so I just kept thinking that I screw this thing up. Uh, and then I have, a lot, once again, a lot of confidence in our defensive staff. They've got so much better in our players, uh, our defense, uh, during the course of the season. Uh, the 59 nothing game against Wisconsin defend uh, Amari Cooper and hold him to 79 yards, but I think it was 79 yards, one yards, best receiver in college football. So um, that, that's what I was going through my mind is get that darn ball down so we, we get out of this with a win. And what a great win it was. Did a great job, Amari Cooper, by the way. Just uh, nine catches, 71 yards. Longest play was 15 yards for Cooper. So following Ohio State's victory in the Sugar Bowl, Urban Meyer has now won more than 84% of his games as a head coach. That's the fourth best mark in FBS history and best among any coach in the last 60 years. They head to Oregon, seven-point underdogs in the title game. Much more to come here. Sports Center at the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. Tim Tebow getting mic'd up on the set. He will join us next to talk about one of his coach's greatest wins, perhaps, on his resume. There it is. They're on their way to Dallas.